All right, you read the title, and it's true. I watched every episode of Big Time Rush. Why? <laughs> to make a video on it. <laughs> I really love the long video essay slash recaps of old Disney Channel Nickelodeon shows and I've always wanted to make one myself, so uh, here we are. But you may be wondering, Morgan, why did you choose Big Time Rush? Well, because I've never seen it before. When I was a kid, I feel like the three biggest shows on Nickelodeon were iCarly, Victorious, and Big Time Rush. iCarly was my favorite TV show and I loved Victorious, but I never watched Big Time Rush. Looking back, I think it's because I was still in that phase of being like, Ugh, boy bands are stupid. Yeah, keep saying that all you want, little me. Just know that in 2018, you're gonna have a BTS phase. Anyway, I thought it'd be fun to do a video on one of the few shows from that era that I've never seen. Before this, all that I knew about the show was that it was about four guys in a boy band called Big Time Rush. That and the song Boyfriend. I have always loved that song, okay? I've been a fan of it for years and I was very excited to get to hear it in this show. But yeah, before this, that was pretty much the extent of my knowledge on BTR. Now though? <laughs> Oh, let me tell you, I have done nothing but eat, sleep, and breathe big time rush for the past month. Not really. I have a life and have done plenty of other things. <laughs> but that made me sound like I was very knowledgeable on this show. The point is that I know all about Big Time Rush now and I am ready to take you through every episode of all four seasons of this show. Are you ready? Because we're doing this, let's go. Okay, well, before we get into the episodes, let me introduce you to our four main characters, the members of Big Time Rush. There's Kendall, the nice sensible one, James, the narcissistic full of himself one, Carlos, the dumb reckless one, and Logan, the nerdy smart one. They're best friends who live in Minnesota and play hockey together. The first the first episode begins with the boys being chased by a bunch of girls, making you think that they're already a huge famous group. But then we're taken back in time. The boys are pulling a prank on the girls' hockey team by spraying them with sprinklers. While they're doing this, James will not shut up about how one day he's going to be a famous singer and everyone will love him and his pretty face. The sprinklers go off and the girls' hockey team chases them. So they're not famous yet, they're just boys being dumb. Before the girls attack them, they make sure to protect James because he's too beautiful to have his face damaged. Okay, we're only a few minutes into this show and I'm already super annoyed by James. His constant obsession with how gorgeous and talented he is drives me nuts. I also have to laugh at the show being like, James is the pretty one, when he has that haircut. I know it's a sign of the times and I probably wouldn't have thought twice about it back then, but <laughs> it's so funny to watch it now when he has that hairstyle. So that night, the boys are watching TV when they see that famous music producer Gustavo Rock is in town and holding auditions to find the next big thing, someone he can turn into a music sensation. The boys are excited because this could be James's big break, but they have no way to get there. Logan has his drive permit, so they kidnap the poor old lady next door to ride in the car with them. Meanwhile, Gustavo and his assistant, Kelly, sit through some truly awful auditions. Listen here, sister. That's the worst singing I've ever heard in my life! The boys arrive just before auditions close, and Carlos, Logan, and Kendall get roped into auditioning too. Logan and Carlos go first, and Gustavo rejects them in such a mean way, he sends Logan into what looks like a panic attack. Now it's time for James to audition, and the others sneak in to watch. Gustavo says that James sucks. This upsets Kendall, and he jumps up and starts to sing a song about how Gustavo is a turd. Security guards show up, the boys beat them up, and the police take them to Kendall's house. This is when we're introduced to Kendall's mom, who from here on out, for brevity's sake, we will just be calling her mom, and his little sister, Katie. Mom is kind of like, eh. Whatever, they always get in trouble and move on. That's when Gustavo and Kelly show up at the door and tell Kendall that they want him to move to LA and become a singer. And he says no. The next day, the boys tell Kendall he's insane for not taking the offer. Kendall ends up calling Gustavo and saying he'll do it only if he signs up his friends too and makes them a boy group. Surprisingly, he agrees and the boys move to LA along with mom and Katie. Okay, the other boy's parents must really trust Kendall's mom. How would that conversation even go? Hey mom, me and the boys are gonna go move to LA and become singers, but don't worry, it's totally safe. Kendall's mom's gonna be there. Kelly takes them to their new home, the Palmwoods, an apartment complex for the future famous. Now there are a few characters at the Palmwoods that are going to be important as the show goes on, so I'm gonna go ahead and introduce them now. First is Mr. Bitters. He's the manager at the Palmwoods. Then there's Camille, an aspiring actress who lives there. She does a lot of method acting to get into character, so oftentimes she'll walk up to one of the boys, slap them, and start crying like, how could you do this to me? You broke my heart. Next is the Jennifers. They're three stuck up mean girls who are all named Jennifer. They don't give anyone the time of day unless they're famous. And finally, we have Buddha Bob, the really weird but friendly maintenance man. Don't ask me why he's called Buddha Bob, because I have no idea. Back to the show, there's a side plot about Katie making a VIP room at the Palmwoods and charging people to get in. Most of the B plots in this show are about Katie. Now Katie is very business smart and is always coming up with ways to earn a bunch of money. I like Katie and I think her actress does well with all the big business words she often has to say at her age, but usually her storylines are pretty unimportant and have no effect on the episode. And that's the case here, so we're just gonna move on from her. At Rock Records, Gustavo is approached by the CEO of the company, Griffin. 
Griffin. Now let me tell you, Griffin is the most annoying character in this show, okay? I hate him. Nearly half of the problems that the boys have to deal with in this series are because of Griffin, and that starts right now. Griffin tells Gustavo that he doesn't think people will like a boy band, so he has three days to convince him that the boys will be a success or he's finished. Gustavo tells the boys about the time limit and has a whole team ready to train them, but they're kind of a hot mess. They aren't very good since they're new to this and they keep goofing off. Eventually, Gustavo gets frustrated with their antics and fires them. Back at the Palmwoods, Kendall gives an inspiring speech about how they didn't try their best and they should really give it their all. He says, should they dump the puck or big time rush? They say big time rush. Now, I'm not sure if this is an actual hockey term or something they just came up with, but either way, it's how they came up with the name of their group. They meet with Gustavo and tell him that they want to take this seriously. They want to be called Big Time Rush and sing a song about four hockey players from Minnesota who make it big time. Uh, 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 oh. The theme song is born. They perform it for Griffin and he's impressed. He gives them three months to come up with some demos and from there he'll decide if they can stay and become a hip group. The boys celebrate and the credits roll. Okay, first episode is finished. First impressions, it's pretty corny, but it had a lot more funny moments than I was expecting. So far of the mean boys, I like Logan the best. He's the nerdy, awkward, kind of sensitive one, which I find very relatable. I think Gustavo is pretty funny and I still hate James. Characters who are full of themselves and won't shut up about how beautiful they are drive me nuts. And that is exactly who James is. But I am excited to really get into this show now and see how they handle becoming a famous boy band. In episode two, Kelly tells the boys they're required to attend school for four hours a day. Oh, I think I'm just as disappointed as the boys are. I wanted exciting storylines about them being a boy band. Not school. There's a school at the Palmwoods that seems super cool because they do fractions with pie. But Gustavo forces them to attend the School of Rock at Rock Records, which is just the four of them in a tiny supply closet. Their teacher refuses to do any actual teaching and instead just tells them about how their boy band will fail because his did. The boys trick him and tell him that he'd actually be great in a one-man band. They're very popular in Germany. They help him record a demo, buy a one-way ticket to Germany, and off he goes. They think they'll be able to go to the Palmwood school now, but Gustavo just hires a new teacher. Meanwhile, Mom tries to sign Katie up for the Palmwood school, but Mr. Bitters says that in order to attend the school, you need to have a job in TV, film, or music so they decide to get her booked in a commercial. At one of the auditions, a boy smack talks Katie, so she beats him up. This results in her landing a job in a detergent commercial where she gets into a fight and she's able to go to the Palmwood school. Back at the School of Rock, the boys drive off every new teacher they get, but Gustavo says that he's just going to keep hiring new ones. That's when they discover that there's a lot of things that Gustavo should legally be providing them as a school, like lockers and the opportunity to play sports. They start leaving things all over the place and saying it's their locker. They even start a basketball team and have a whole game going on. After too much of this goes on, Gustavo gives up and lets them go to the Palmwood school. However, the boys immediately get detention because they would fantasize about the Palmwood school always being a party, and surprise, surprise, it's not. In episode three, the boys are unhappy with their apartment because it's a total dump. At Rock Records, Griffin tells them that their founder, Mr. Fujisaki, wants to shut down the music division. His plan is for the boys to film a promo in a fancy apartment surrounded by company products to change Fujisaki's mind and show him that music groups are perfect for selling his products, like blenders and TVs. He needs a performance in two days or the music division is gone. They plan to have the apartment set built at Rock Records, but the boys come up with a plan to have it built at their apartment. They enlist the help of Camille and her acting abilities for help, and she mentions that Logan is hot. Camille has a thing for Logan, so just know that from here on out, she's often making comments about how she likes him and how he is hers. Camille, Carlos, and Katie head to Rock Records and convince Kelly that the set is being built there, when in reality, they called the set designers and told them to build it at the apartment. Kendall and Logan are in charge of making sure everything goes smoothly there, and Logan is constantly panicking and saying it's a bad idea. Also at the Palmwoods, James distracts Gustavo by filming a really long interview for the promo. Also, James is obsessed with bandanas in this one for some reason, and when he finishes his interview, he turns into Bandana Man and locks Bitters in a closet to keep them from finding out what they're doing. Eventually, Kelly and Gustavo figure out what's going on, but by that point, it's too late to move the set, so they film the promo at the apartment. However, after they're done, the set gets torn down and taken away because they don't own it. Mr. Fujisaki ends up loving the promo, but also, I think he's dying? The episode ends with Gustavo transforming their apartment back into how the set looked to treat them. In episode four, Gustavo says that the band needs a bad boy. He thinks it should be Kendall, and Griffin agrees. Kendall is obviously against the idea. Gustavo says that bad boys get a lot of girls, so the other three jump at the opportunity to be bad, but fail miserably. Meanwhile, Katie is forced to hang out with a creepy girl named Molly because her mom thinks she needs some friends. Katie doesn't want to because she's weird, and mom tells her not to judge a book by its cover. Then mom sees what looks like Buddha Bob murdering bitters and runs away. In reality, he was just cutting a jelly donut with an ax. The police tell Katie this, and she decides to keep it a secret from her mom to show her that she judges too. As for Big Time Rush, all of the boys are too nice to be the bad 
bad boy. So Griffin adds a new member to the group, Wayne Wayne, and he'll be the bad boy. The boys don't like him and how mean he is, so Kendall tells him that Big Time Rush is better as a four-person group. Wayne Wayne calls Griffin, and he agrees, and says that one of the boys will be kicked out to make room for him. Gustavo can't do anything about it because Griffin is his boss, and what he says goes. So they have to come up with a plan. Back at the Palmwoods, Katie isn't allowed to do anything but play with Molly until the axe murderer is caught. She tries to tell her mom the truth, but she doesn't believe her and thinks she's just saying that so she doesn't have to hang out with Molly. Katie asks Bob to come over to their room to fix something so she'll realize he's just a maintenance guy. At Rock Records, Kendall shows up and challenges Wayne Wayne to a bad boy off and wins by destroying Gustavo's office. Griffin acknowledges Kendall as the true bad boy and kicks Wayne Wayne out of the group. It turns out that the boys and Gustavo planned the whole thing to get rid of him. Buddha Bob arrives at the apartment and Mom knocks him out. The boys come home and ask why the maintenance guy's on the floor and that's when she realizes Katie was telling the truth. On the TV, they see Wayne Wayne is now in a children's group. Then there's breaking news. It turns out that Molly is actually a 20-year-old con actress and is being chased by the police, so Katie was right. She is weird. In episode 5, the boys are sad that all of the girls at the Palmwoods are mean. They wish for a nice girl from North Carolina, and then one shows up. Her name is Joe, and all the boys fight over her. At the studio, Gustavo wrote a ballad about love, but he doesn't like how it sounds. There's also a big guy in the corner of the room named Freight Train who was hired to make sure people do as Gustavo says. Then James randomly promotes the Barracuda man spray he's been wearing. He keeps sneezing as they practice, so Kelly takes him to the doctor to get checked out for a pollen allergy. The other three rush back to the palm woods to go after Joe. Logan and Carlos think they should pretend to either be a bad boy or British to get her attention. Kendall says that he's just going to be himself, and they say that will never work. It was at this moment I knew that Kendall and Joe would end up together. Carlos and Logan crash and burn, and Joe leaves before Kendall can get a chance to talk to her. Kelly takes James to see Doc Hollywood, who is a a total quack. He tries to give James a huge shot, but he puts up a fight. Meanwhile, Gustavo is trying to make the ballad sound good, but is really struggling to write a love song. Katie shows up because she has to write a report on someone she admires, and she chose Gustavo. She doesn't actually admire him, he's just convenient. The boys are back to practicing, but James can't sing properly because he's wearing a mask to protect himself from the pollen. He finally agrees to get the allergy shot, but on the way to the doctor, he jumps out of the car and goes to woo Joe. Unfortunately for him, he's now super swollen, and Joe tells him it's the Barracuda man spray he's been using. It's been recalled for allergic reactions. James runs off horrified. Freight Train tells Gustavo that he doesn't think the song is bad, and he'd be touched if someone sang it to him. So the remaining members of BTR run off to go sing it to Joe. Katie leaves, and her report concludes that Gustavo is a failure who can't write a song, and she tells him to live a little. Mom shows up and invites him to come back to the palm woods to eat with them. The boys, minus James, sing the song to Joe, but they keep pushing each other out of the way and fighting, which results in them singing faster. Gustavo hears this and realizes that the song is better sped up than as a ballad. Joe tells the boys that she already has a boyfriend back home, but she'd like to be friends, and they agree. The boys perform the new song, and Katie now has a nice ending for her report. Back at the Palm Woods, Camille says that Joe said that she was single. She is, she just didn't want to put up with the guys because of how they were acting. In episode 6, the boys are singing, and Gustavo tells them that they suck. Kelly yells at him and says that he should be nicer to them. He and Kelly have to leave on business, and he needs someone to watch his mansion. The boys want to do it, and Kelly says he should let them to thank them for all their hard work, and he agrees. Unsurprisingly, they totally destroy the mansion, and Mom and Katie have to come and help them clean up. There are only two important things to take note of in this episode. The first is that Gustavo has a fridge filled with nothing but pudding for some reason. The second is that while Gustavo is away, he discovers a boy group that does exactly as he says, but they're just not the same. Kelly gets him to admit that he misses the boys, and when he returns, he tells him that he likes them. It's actually really sweet, but the moment is ruined by the boys running away before he notices any of the things they broke. Episode 7 opens with the boys being super injured and telling Camille the story of how they ended up like that. They were getting their picture taken for Pop Tiger magazine, but the huge star, Dak Zevon, is also in the building, and there are crazy fangirls trying to get inside. The photographer that will be taking the boys' pictures is super weird. <laughs> then the police show up for Gustavo and Kelly because they destroyed Matthew McConaughey's mailbox. He's always playing bongos at 3 a.m., which drives Gustavo nuts, so this was his revenge and he made Kelly be the lookout. They get taken away to do community service. Now the weird photographer and Griffin are in charge of the photo shoot. They make them look absolutely ridiculous because these two men are bizarro, and the boys keep sneaking off to try and take a good picture in secret. While all of this is happening, Mom and Katie arrive because they want to see Dak Zevon, but they obviously aren't allowed into his room and keep getting stopped by security. Eventually, Mom leads the mob of crazed fangirls to his room to bust the door down but Katie sneaks in and saves Dak by crawling through the vents to escape. Speaking of escaping, Gustavo and Kelly break out of jail and get back to the boys because they know Griffin is going to make their photo awful. They make it back and take a better photo for them, but then Katie and Dak pop out of the vent and into the room they're in. The fangirls rush in and throw themselves all over the boys instead of Dak, and that's how they got injured. In episode 8, the boys realize they're spending too much time together, so they split up for the day. James decides to learn acting from Camille, and he keeps showing off his abs. Stop it, James. They go to an audition together, and James ends up getting a part, but Camille does doesn't. She's really upset about it, so he lies and says that he didn't get a part either to make her feel better. Okay, James. That was nice. I will give you that. Logan wants to go to a math lecture, 
but it's only for girls. So mom dresses him up like one. He sneaks in and the lecturer says that boys are dumb. This upsets Logan, so he reveals that he's in disguise, but then all the girls beat him up. As for Carlos, his dad shows up to visit, but they realize that Carlos's helmet is missing. Yeah, I haven't mentioned it yet, but you may have noticed that Carlos is always wearing a helmet. I don't really know why. He's just kind of attached to the thing and has a tendency to treat it like a person. His helmet is just very important to him and he's almost always wearing it. So for the entirety of the episode, he and his dad are on a mission to find it and it turns out a dog stole it. And finally, we have Kendall. Katie overhears Joe talking on the phone about how she doesn't really have a boyfriend. She tells Kendall about it, so he confronts her. Joe insists that she has a boyfriend and that he'll be visiting her today. She hires a guy to be her fake boyfriend, but he's really dumb and immediately blows their cover. Joe admits the truth, that she said that because she doesn't want a relationship right now. To which Kendall responds, who said I even wanted to be your boyfriend? Uh. You did, Kendall. Do you not remember the episode where you were trying to date her? They storm off, only to walk right back up to each other and agree to go out sometime. They all meet up at the end of the day, excited to tell each other about what happened. Okay, this episode was weird and had nothing to do with them being a boy band. I was excited to see them navigate becoming famous, but they still haven't even released any music. In episode nine, it's officially been three months since they moved to LA. Kelly shows up and gives them plane tickets because if Griffin doesn't pick their demos, they have to go back to Minnesota. There are six bands with demos and only one will be picked by the label. Griffin's daughter Mercedes arrives to pick up the demos because she is the one who chooses the winning group. Then she demands that Kendall be her boyfriend and drags him off. Mercedes is super demanding and Kendall is not having it, but everyone tells him to put up with it so she picks their demos. However, Kendall isn't cutting it, so she makes Carlos her new boyfriend. He isn't cutting it either, so she tries to move on to Logan. But that's when Kendall stands up to her and says that they aren't going to do this anymore. She says that she'll never pick their demo and storms off. She has a change of heart though and comes back and says that Kendall is right. She also admits that she's not actually the one who picks the demos. Griffin entrusts that job to a hit predicting chimp in a suit. I'm sorry, what? She agrees to help them kidnap the chimp and train it to like big time rush music. However, this backfires when it just starts throwing bananas at them and runs away. Griffin finds the chimp and confronts them all. He still has the monkey pick the demo and it doesn't choose Big Time Rush. But then Mercedes gives actual logical and smart reasons that Big Time Rush should be chosen. Griffin decides that she's right and picks the boy's demo. He puts Mercedes in charge of demos from now on and reassigns the chimp to missile defense. Mercedes demands that Logan is her boyfriend now and the boys sing halfway there. Oh, also there's a side plot about bidders trying to get their apartment because their lease is up and will only be renewed if the boy's demo is picked or someone living there works at the Palmwoods. So Katie gives her mom a fake resume and she gets a job as assistant manager until they find out the boys are staying. It's really not important like most Katie side plots. Anyway, now that the boys got their demos picked, I'm hoping that the show starts to shift and focus more on their life as an up and coming boy band. Episode 10 is about the boys throwing a party at the Palmwoods. Okay, never mind. Gustavo is having a party to celebrate BTR getting an album, but the boys aren't invited because it's a classy party and the boys aren't classy. Mom and Katie are going on a weekend trip, so the boys want to throw their own party but can't risk getting in trouble with bidders. They decide to have a small get together instead. Kendall invites Joe, but as they talk, they realize they don't have much in common. A bunch of people start showing up to their place because Carlos accidentally invited his entire contact list and now it's a full blown party. Camille is there and she tries to put the moves on Logan, but it weirds him out, so he runs over to Kendall. He says to just tell her he's not interested, but Joe insists he give her a chance because she's cool. He imagines them both in an awesome action movie together and decides to give it a shot. But then Mercedes shows up and now he has to try splitting his time between the two of them without the other finding out. Kendall and Joe leave and talk about how they don't have much in common, but then they run into Bitters who's trying to find out who's throwing a party. They call James and Carlos and they move the party to the pool. Joe and Kendall run around distracting Bitters until they can lock him up. They head down to the party and realize that they can still have fun together even if they don't have a lot in common. Mercedes and Camille figure out what Logan is doing and push him in the pool. Later, Camille says that she's still mad at him but would like it if they dance together. And this is the start of Logan and Camille's relationship. I gotta be honest, I don't know how much I like them considering the way Camille was acting with Logan up until now reminded me of Pepe Le Pew. Oh, also Gustavo's party totally sucked so they moved it to the palm woods and everyone had a great time. In episode 11, the boys have caused $2,000 worth of damage at the palm woods and Bitters charges it to Gustavo. He is tired of them breaking things, so he makes them pay the $2,000. The boys have to get jobs. Carlos becomes Gustavo's assistant, but ends up in a war with the coffee machine when it won't stop making foam. Kelly sees the mess and is shocked. The coffee machine, which has a voice, says that women are weak, so she and Carlos destroy it. Logan and Kendall start a babysitting service, but they can't keep the kids entertained, so they start destroying the place. They decide to start a car wash and have the kids run it to keep them occupied. James becomes a model with Katie as his manager, but he gets beat out by all the other aspiring models. He gets depressed because he's not the pretty one anymore, and Katie cheers him up by telling him she got him a modeling job. She just left out the part that it's as an elbow model. The boys have now made all their money back and deliver it to Gustavo, but then a bunch of people start showing up with bills for things like the coffee machine, James' stylist, and running an illegal babysitting service. Gustavo gets mad and starts breaking things. Griffin walks in and says all the damage will cost 14K, so they all run a car wash together. In episode 12, the boys will be interviewed by Deke, the top entertainment blogger. Gustavo says they can't act like themselves though because they're a hot mess and that would make him hate them and tank their careers. 
They go through extensive training, so they have the perfect answers to all of his questions. While they do that, Gustavo makes the boys scuttle butter accounts. I guess that's supposed to be Twitter. He accidentally posts I hate Brussels, as in the city in Belgium, instead of Brussels sprouts on his own account. I love the web. Web, web, web. Ah, yes. I can see the creators of this show really understood the internet. Gustavo ends up on the news for his post, and now the people of Belgium are boycotting his records and Big Time Rush. At the Palmwoods, the boys ace their interview with Deke by using all of the answers they prepared. Deke concludes that Big Time Rush are a bunch of phonies with rehearsed answers and says he's going to tell everyone to not buy their album. He refuses to give them a chance to be themselves, so they lock him in a closet. Every time he tries to escape, they chase him and lock him back up. Eventually, they realize that they let the pressure get to them and they shouldn't care what others think and let him go. At Rock Records, there are a bunch of protesters outside. Gustavo tries to post a picture of him with Belgian waffles to appease them, but they're actually just frozen waffles. This only makes the protesters more angry and they storm the place. When the boys arrive, he tells them that their album won't sell too well in Belgium. Deke's blog post is up and he says that at first he thought they were phonies, but later realized they're genuine, passionate guys. Deke sure is a nice guy, because I don't know if I could say that stuff about the guys that kidnapped me. In episode 13, they're all sitting around the pool singing when a table starts moving on its own. Ooh, spooky. Later, Gustavo shows up and says his mansion is flooded, so he needs to stay with them. The boys don't want him there, but mom says it's just one night and to be nice. Gustavo actually seems to be having fun hanging out with them, which I thought was kind of cute, but I guess the boys didn't enjoy it too much. Before bed, he says he'd normally be home alone writing songs, and he had fun and thanks them. But then he ends up snoring and yelling in his sleep, keeping them all up. They go to sleep in the lobby, and there's some more ghost activity. The next morning, Logan and Carlos go to investigate and catch a green ghost on camera. Gustavo sticks around and ruins James and Kendall's day at the pool. They ask Gustavo if he misses his bed. He does, so he moves it to their apartment. He tells them that his mansion won't be flooded anymore in one to five days. They talk to Kelly about it, and she says that his mansion is already fixed. Gustavo runs by, yells tag and seek, and pushes Kelly, and she just gets right back up like nothing happened, which I found pretty funny. She explains that his mom made him practice piano all day, so he never got to be a kid, which is why he's running around and playing now. At night, the boys try to catch the ghost with vacuum cleaners, which results in a Scooby-Doo style chase scene. They're eventually able to unmask the ghost, and it's just some girl who's staying at the Palmwoods. Her name is Stephanie, and she's making a horror movie with the security footage. They agree not to tell Bitters if she scares Gustavo. She does, and he runs back home and writes them a song, which they perform. In episode 14, the school is having an end-of-year party, but it's always lame because it's hosted by Bitters. The boys say that they should have a dance, and the teacher agrees, but the boys have to prep everything by tonight. Gustavo agrees to let them have the dance at Rock Records as long as they perform. Mom agrees to be their chaperone, but Kendall and Katie think she should take a date. She says that the only man she's interested in dating is the man on the front of her romance novels, Fabio. They look him up online and find him in an infomercial where if you buy the product, he will deliver it personally. They place an order, and when he shows up, he's like, oh no, not more kids trying to get me to date their mom. They kidnap him and tie him up in the bathroom. There is a lot of kidnapping in this show. Mom shows up and tells the kids that she appreciated that they were thinking about her happiness when they asked her about bringing a date, and she's grateful for them. Fabio overhears this and thinks that she sounds like a nice lady and agrees to go to the dance with her. Logan asks Camille to the dance, but she wants him to do it with more flair since she's never been asked before. Joe is upset because Kendall isn't asking her to the dance. Carlos asks the Jennifers to go with him, and they agree, but they also force him to act as three different people. At the dance, the Jennifers pull Carlos around and force him to switch several times until Stephanie, the horror movie girl, asks to go with him as himself, and he agrees. After the last two episodes, I thought that Stephanie was going to become a recurring character, but you never see her again after this. Logan rides in on a fake horse and asks Camille to be his date, and she happily agrees. Kendall tells Joe that he didn't ask her because he assumed they were in a relationship, which makes her happy. Fabio shows up to dance with mom, and the boys perform a song that isn't boyfriend. As of episode 15, the boys have been in LA for six months and wonder when they'll meet a cool celebrity like Jordan Sparks. You know what I'm wondering? When you're finally going to make it big time and this show will start focusing more on your life as a boy band than your antics at the Palmwoods. Anyway, as you may have guessed, Jordan actually shows up. Gustavo wrote her a song and she'll be recording it at Rock Records. He tells them to stay away from her because they always cause a mess and he calls them bad luck rush. Well, long story short, telling them to stay away doesn't help because they end up knocking her down a well. Kendall, James, and Logan end up falling down too while trying to help her and then Carlos jumps down with them because he's lonely. At the studio, Gustavo gets a package in the mail. He opens it and it's a skunk. It was sent by Gustavo's arch enemy, Hawk, of Hawk Records. He's mad that Gustavo gets to do a song with Jordan instead of him. So he sent the skunk and when Jordan realizes the place stinks, she'll go to him instead. In the well, Jordan tells them that she can't quite figure out how the song Gustavo wrote her should sound. They help by singing it with her, and she realizes it should be a duet with Big Time Rush. They realize that they have their phones, so they call Freight Train to pull them out. They head to the studio and help them catch the skunk. Afterwards, they record the song with Jordan, and James's hair looks so much better that way. Then Jordan agrees to help them get revenge on Hawk. 
She calls him and says that she wants to do a song with him. When he gets in his car to go meet with her, the skunk is in there and sprays him. It ends with Gustavo admitting to Kelly that the boys are actually his good luck charm because of all the good that's happened since they came. In episode 16, James tans too much and looks like a yam. Camille says he has Hollywood fever and the city is starting to change him, so the boys confront him. He's using mandarine tanning spray and refuses to hand it over. Gustavo tells the boys to fix James or he'll replace him with someone who isn't orange. The spray comes off with water, so they hunt him down with water guns. Kendall is the only one who actually chases him though, because Carlos becomes the third Jennifer after one of them left to do a soap opera, and Logan basically gets turned into a stoner. They have the Hollywood fever now too. Kendall, Kelly, and Gustavo work together to stop them, but it doesn't go well. Gustavo is now orange and Kelly is injured. Kendall says that he's going to the rink because it reminds him of his roots. This makes them realize that the boys must be homesick and need to get on the ice because hockey. Yeah, I always forget that they were hockey players. <laughs> the show brings it up now and then, but that's about it. We never see them playing hockey or watching it. They don't look like hockey players, especially James. To me, hockey seems like something that they forget is supposed to be part of their characters, so they just bring it up sometimes because they don't know how else to fit it in. Anyway, the side plot in this episode is about Katie selling shaved ice. She helps them set up a little snowy area for them to have a snowball fight, and they're all back to normal. In episode 17, Camille hasn't booked a part in six months, and her dad is making her move back to Connecticut, so the boys decide to give her a part in their music video. Gustavo doesn't know who will be in it yet, though, because they need to meet with directors to find the right concept. They tell Camille she got the part anyway because they didn't want to upset her. Then Carlos tells the Jennifers they could be in the video too. It keeps spiraling from there because they're just too nice and keep telling everyone they can be in it. The side plot in this one is about Bitters getting a new car and he tries to wash it all sexy in front of girls and I want to bleach my eyes. He also keeps it in the park, so now Katie and all the other kids don't have anywhere to play. The boys make it a point to reject every video that doesn't have room for their friends in it. Gustavo figures them out and tells them to fire all their friends. They decide to just shoot their own video because all their parents need to see to let them stay is that they're in a video. The video ends up sucking though, so they tell them the truth. Camille says it was sweet, but slaps Logan. When he asks her why she did that, she says it seemed like the thing to do. I really do want to like Camille and Logan, but then she just keeps doing weird stuff like this. They ask the weird photographer from that episode a while back to shoot the video for them. Gustavo rejected him several times and he just wants someone to give him a chance. He needs a car for the video and Katie suggests that they use the one Bitters bought. They trick him, trap him in the trunk, and use the car in the video for a song that's still not boyfriend. It turns out amazing and Gustavo approves. He also buys the car from Bitters to make it the big time rush mobile, but they never use the car again in the show. <laughs> episode 18 is the final episode in season one and it's an hour long. The boys album is ready, but the record company won't release it until they announce their tour. In order to do that, they have to have their first concert in two weeks and it needs to be a success. Okay, finally, we're at the end of season one, their album's about to come out and they'll go on tour. Then this show will finally turn into what I want. Them living as a famous boy band and the challenges that come with it. They train really hard and Katie starts selling bootleg BTR merch. They have a practice concert for their friends that goes really well. But then Griffin says that Big Time Rush is dead because the company has decided they're too risky. You have got to be kidding me. Apparently he wants to shift their focus to children's books on tape so they have to go home. Kendall says goodbye to Joe, and she gives him a kiss to remember her by. Logan asks if Camille will give him something to remember her, and she slaps him. Come on, Camille. I like you as a character, and I really want to like you with Logan, but you've got to stop the slapping. The boys are back in Minnesota, and James is really upset about it. The boys tell him that he needs to move on, and they have to go back to pursuing their old dreams. This upsets him, and he storms off. When he's on his own, he ends up running into Hawk. Gustavo is stuck recording children's books and he and Kelly cry about how they miss the boys. Kelly discovers that Griffin spent about two million on Big Time Rush, so they'll need to spend that much to get them back. But Gustavo would have to sell his mansion to do it. He does it though and heads to Minnesota. He finds the boys minus James and tells them to come back because he taught them about friendship, loyalty, and family, and he believes in them. That is so sweet. They go to find James, but he's already left with Hawk and signed to his record company. Back in LA, James has totally transformed the apartment and even has a butler now. He won't come back because they told him to move on. The boys decide to go on without James and promote the concert they were supposed to have before Griffin dropped them. Meanwhile, Hawk says that James will now be Jamez, and he has a photoshopped face and he doesn't even sing. It's just an AI voice singing for him. Back home, the butler tells James that he thinks that he should go back to his friends, and he does. The night of the concert, they go to their dressing room, but it's actually Hawk's truck, and he kidnaps them because he wants to kill their music careers. He takes them to an abandoned warehouse and ties them up. Carlos is able to get them free, and now they have to get to their concert on time. James's butler shows up and drives them there. They're able to perform, and it's a huge success. The scene is intercut with shots from their real-life performance at Times Square. Griffin offers them a tour, immediate album release, and buys Gustavo's mansion back. Kelly also makes him promise that he'll never do this to Big Time Rush again, and he agrees. I want you to remember that Griffin made this promise. The episode ends with the boys being chased by a bunch of girls, much like how the first episode started. Okay, season one is over. So far, I can say that this show has had some funny moments and decent episodes, 
but I did find myself getting a bit bored at times. It often focused too much on the dumb things they did around the palm woods and at school, instead of their lives as big time rush, which is what I'm really interested in. I'm hoping it's because they wanted season one to focus more on everything that leads up to them becoming famous, and the rest of the show will be about them living their life big time. To me, that's the draw of the show, kind of like how in Wizards of Waverly Place, I want to see them being wizards, and in iCarly, I want to see them being internet famous. Okay, now before we move on, I have a little segment that we're going to do in between seasons. Hello and welcome to Morgan's Character Ranking Corner. Don't mind the fact that this isn't actually a corner, and also don't mind the fact that I'm sitting on the floor. <laughs> Look, I needed an area with a blank wall and this is as blank as it's gonna get, is down here on the floor. Anyway, after every season, I'm going to give my official ranking of the eight main characters in this show and give my reasoning why I put them there. Here we go. Number one, Gustavo. He is easily the best character in this show, okay? He is hilarious and carries every single scene that he is in. I also really love the moments where he admits that he really cares about the boys and sees them as his family. I think it's really sweet. It does make me sad because the boys don't really seem to reciprocate that though. In second place, we have Kelly. I think she's awesome and a total badass and nothing would get done at Rock Records without her. She's nice to both Gustavo and the boys, so she's kind of like the mediary between them, and she's the one that gets Gustavo to admit that he cares about Big Time Rush. In third, we have Logan. If I had actually watched Big Time Rush as a tween, I totally would have been a Logan girly. <laughs> he has a lot of funny moments, he's nice, nerdy, awkward, and like I said before, I find him kind of relatable. In fourth, we have Kendall. He's just a nice, normal guy. He's less outlandish and in your face as the other guys, and I think he's the character that we, as the viewer, are supposed to see ourselves in. He's the sensible one who I can always count on to not annoy me. In fifth place, we have Katie. I like Katie. I think that it's funny how business-oriented she is at her age, and she has an attitude that doesn't come off as bratty. It's more humorous. I just don't think that they're using her character right. Like, she had a lot of storylines this season that I didn't even talk about because they just had no point. They had nothing to do with the main plot of the episodes and felt really random and out of place. So I hope from here on out they do a better job of incorporating her character. Sixth place is Carlos. I, I really want to like Carlos, but he's just not giving me much. His storylines aren't very interesting, and his only personality trait at this point is what I like to call dumb puppy. He's pure-hearted, but God, is that boy stupid. I'm hoping there will be more storylines that focus on him as we go on, because right now he's just kind of comic relief, and that's it. Seventh is Mom. The only character giving me less than Carlos is her. She seems like a nice, supportive mother, then and, and that's it. <laughs> And in last place, we have James. I do feel kind of bad putting him below such a nothing character like Mom, but he just drives me nuts. I'm sorry, James, but this isn't doing it for me. Your narcissistic attitude and your haircut annoys me. But anyway, yeah, this is the current ranking. I will see you all again at the end of season two, and we will see if any of our characters move up or down the board. Back to me. Thanks, me. Okay, now it's time to move on to season two. Now, this season is actually completely out of order on Paramount+, Plus, which is where I watched it. You see, they had the episodes in production order rather than the order that they aired in. For reasons that we'll get to later, this makes this season beyond confusing to watch. So I have gone ahead and put the episodes in what I think is the right order. So let's go. The first episode opens with footage of their successful tour. Okay, I like this. They're getting famous. We're heading in the right direction. The boys return to the palm woods after their tour ends, but a bunch of new people have moved in and don't know them. So they're not popular anymore. This upsets James and Carlos. So they do everything they can to get their popularity back. I'm just in for another season of palm woods antics, aren't I? Their teacher says that they have to have all of the homework they missed finished before they're allowed to work again, which is bad because Griffin has booked the boys on Rocktoberfest, which is tomorrow. Kelly, Logan, and Gustavo work together to finish all the assignments on time. They finish up and have the other boys write one thing each to say they helped. The teacher is satisfied with the work and they're allowed to perform at Rocktoberfest. All of the residents at the Palm Woods overhear this and want to be invited to the show, making them popular again. As for Kendall in this episode, he sees Joe with another guy and thinks she's cheating on him. In reality, it's just her co-star on the TV show she's on, Jet. Joe lets Kendall come to her rehearsal so he can say that her relationship with Jet is strictly professional. But Kendall keeps ruining a kiss scene and gets kicked out. Later, he sees a text from Jet pop up on her phone that says, I feel the same way about you. He confronts her and says that she really is cheating. She shows him the text that she sent, which is that she thinks he's a great actor. She tells Kendall that if he can't trust her, he should just forget about her and leaves. The next day, Kendall leaves Joe a message and invites her to the show. If she comes, he'll know that she wants to give things another chance. And if not, they'll end things. Rocktoberfest is here and the boys sing yet another song that's not boyfriend. Joe appears in the crowd with a sign that says, I heart Kendall. Now, as many of you know, in real life, Big Time Rush are back and they're doing concerts again. And I'm sure most of you have already seen this, but the actress who plays Joe is at one of their shows holding up an I heart Kendall sign. And I just think that's so fun and cute they did that. In episode two, the boys are opening fan mail. That's when their childhood friend from Minnesota, Jenny, shows up. Now, Jenny was briefly shown in the first episode being hauled out at the audition room, but we haven't seen or heard from her since. It turns out she's 
sent the boys fan mail, and Carlos replied by giving her the address to Rock Records and telling her they'd help her become famous. The problem with Jenny is that she's accident-prone and always causing disasters. Everyone around her always ends up hurt, and property ends up destroyed. The boys are too nice to send her home, so they agree to help her. James is out, though, because he's too traumatized from how injured he got being around her as a kid. Instead, he meets a boy who is a huge fan and wants to be just like him, so he teaches him to do things the way he does. Katie warns him that the boy seems weird, and he might be trying to steal his identity, but James doesn't believe her. No, you need to trust her on these things. Remember Molly? Big surprise, Katie was right. The boy locks James in the basement, says he's going to steal his place in Big Time Rush, and leaves him there. Katie saves him though, and that's the end of that plot line. It didn't feel like it had much of a resolution, but okay. The others are trying to help Jenny, but no one wants her because of how disastrous she is. Bitter threatens to kick the boys out if they don't get rid of Jenny. Camille suggests getting her an international job, so they bring a bunch of agents to listen to her sing, but she somehow causes the place to explode, and all of the agents end up in the hospital. They head to Rock Records, and there's a disaster metal band there. She falls to the ceiling, and the band thinks she's cool, and brings her on as their new singer. In episode 3, the boys are recording a song about heartbreak, but Carlos is singing way too happily. This is because he's never experienced heartbreak before because he's never had a girlfriend. From here on out, there's a lot of relationship drama in this episode, and Bitters and Katie are watching it all while they eat popcorn like it's a drama. And honestly, that is such a mood because that's how I felt watching this one. So the least important slash interesting of them all is Kendall and Joe. They're both really busy and are struggling to find the time to be together. They resolve it by coming to the conclusion that a little time together is better than none at all. Next is Carlos. A girl wearing a helmet, roller skates, and holding a corn dog crashes into him. Her name is Sasha, and it's love at first sight between the two, and they have a happy relationship. Gustavo admits to Kelly that Sasha is actually an actress he hired to break Carlos's heart so he can sing the song better. Kelly tells Gustavo that if he breaks Carlos's heart, she'll break his music awards. He tells Sasha that she can't break up with Carlos, so instead, she has to act like a terrible girlfriend so he'll want to break up with her. However, this doesn't work, and Carlos is willing to do and put up with anything for her. Sasha eventually tells him the truth, but would like to keep being his girlfriend anyway because she realized what a great guy he is. Gustavo decides to dump the heartbreak song and write a new one. Now it's time for the juiciest drama of them all. James is helping Camille practice a scene. They have to kiss, so they do a quick little one. But then they get caught up in the moment and have a full-on kiss. They realize what they've done and are like, ah! How dare you two do this to my boy Logan? He does not deserve this! Speaking of Logan, he shows up and the two freak out and run. Camille tells James that he has to tell Logan the truth because it's not right to keep it from him. I agree, Camille, but you're just as much at fault here. Go with James and both of you tell him. James approaches Logan, but he chickens out and tells him that he used his toothbrush instead. Camille, however, doesn't know this and later asks Logan if he's upset. He says that if James wants to put his mouth on something worn out and gross, that's his problem. Camille gets offended, thinking he's talking about her lips, which results in her revealing the truth. Logan is upset and challenges James to a spitball fight, but neither of them can bring themselves to hurt each other, so they go back to being friends. Logan forgives Camille, but ultimately breaks up with her. They agree to stay friends, but then they kiss. These two have such a weird relationship. It's time for the boys to sing Gustavo's new song that's not about heartbreak, and oh my god, it's boyfriend! Yes! Finally! If copyright wasn't a thing, you know I would be playing the song right now. But alas, I cannot, so I encourage you all to go listen to it for yourselves. Afterwards, Sasha tells Carlos that she doesn't actually like corn dogs, and he breaks up with her. In episode 4, the boys are going to be on a popular morning show, but the producer realizes that the show is running a bit long and cuts their performance. Back at Rock Records, Kelly and Gustavo are about to head out to meet the boys, but Griffin shows up and won't let them leave until they complete a corporate evaluation. If they don't pass, he'll kick them out of the building and give it to someone else. The things he's evaluating them on are really dumb though, like haircutting and the place being too clean. They obviously don't pass. The boys hijack the morning show and speed through the segments to make time for them. There are a lot of crimes committed here. They destroy property. Katie tases a security guard. They cut a hole beneath a guy, causing him to fall. The viewers love it though, and it earns the company $3 million, so Griffin agrees to let them stay, even though they failed the evaluation. They succeeded in shortening the show enough for them to perform. Episode 5 is a weird, non-canon Halloween episode, where half the cast are different types of monsters. Kendall is secretly a werewolf and trying to keep it from Joe, but it turns out she knew the whole time. Gustavo and Kelly are able to turn them into humans so they can perform as a regular boy band. Yeah, we're not gonna spend too much time on this one. It's pretty random and unimportant. In episode six, the media starts reporting that Joe and Jet are dating. Joe is mad about this and goes to talk to the network publicist. She says that it's what the people want, so she either fake dates Jet or she'll kill Joe's career and all of the fans will hate her. Kendall talks to Gustavo about it and he is mad because he wants Kendall to walk with Joe at the upcoming red carpet since it'll be good publicity for Big Time Rush. He finds security footage of Kendall and Joe kissing and posts it online, causing the fans to freak out. Joe's team is mad about this and wants to lock Kendall in their closet until it dies down, but he comes up with a plan to appease them. He says that they'll go to the zoo and have the media catch Kendall breaking Joe's heart, making him a bad boy. Then Joe will run to Jet and be with him. However, on the day of the plan, Kendall puts some peanut butter on the back of Jet's hood, causing a llama to start eating it. The media starts recording this, so Jet tries to make it look better by acting all cute with it. This becomes a viral video, so Jet goes to the red carpet with the llama, while Kendall and Joe go together. There are actually 
actually two pointless side plots in this episode. One is about Logan and James trying to resell some expensive sneakers, and the other is about Carlos and Katie getting mad that Bitters is making the vending machine prices too high. In episode 7, it's time for the boys' yearly pranking competition, and everyone at the Palmwoods participates. If you get pranked, you're out. And the last one standing is crowned king of the pranks. Logan accidentally pranks himself and has to go see Doc Hollywood. He ends up helping him all day and realizes he loves both being a doctor and singing. He doesn't know which he should pursue, and mom tells him he's still a teenager and has plenty of time to decide. Oh yeah, both Kendall and Katie win the prank war in a tie, so they're crowned king and queen of pranks. Episode 8 is an hour-long Christmas special. The boys have a flight to Minnesota in a few hours, and Gustavo will be heading to Fiji. But Griffin shows up and wants them to have a three-song Christmas EP released tonight. They work together to finish the first song, but then Griffin decides he wants the last two songs to feature celebrities. Miranda Cosgrove is having a Christmas live stream nearby, so they break in and convince her to record a song with them. As they leave, Gustavo gets run over by Snoop Dogg, and he agrees to do a song for them. Griffin says it'll have to be a very unique song, because Justin Bieber just released a Christmas song with 50 Cent, and it can't seem like they're copying. Gustavo once wrote a song in five minutes called Yard Squirrel Christmas, and it was a huge success. He writes a sequel to the song for the boys in Snoop Dogg, and there's a really weird animation for it. While all of this is happening, Katie realizes that Bitters is all alone on Christmas, which makes her sad. The boys finally make it back, only to find out that their flight is cancelled due to a huge storm. They decorate the lobby and have a nice holiday with Bitters. Gustavo's flight was also cancelled, so he and Kelly show up and they all have a Christmas feast together. In episode 9, Gustavo says James is still full of himself, Carlos is stupid, Logan has no swagger. Logan still lacks swagger. Yes, but if you ever need a colored pencil, who are you gonna call? And Kendall talks back. Then Kendall talks back to him, and Gustavo tries to kill them. Buddha Bob does some weird sleep hold on him, and it makes him calm. The boys decide that maybe they should try to make Gustavo less stressed by acting how he wants. Logan downloads a swagger app that tells him how to be cool, and all of a sudden he's so awesome that everyone is following him around. Somehow, Logan being cool is draining James of his swagger. The more powerful Logan gets, the weaker James becomes. Eventually, Logan decides he doesn't like all the work that comes with being cool, so he deletes the swagger app and James is back to normal. Carlos takes advice from a parrot the entire episode, and this is somehow him being being less stupid. Gustavo gets advice from Buddha Bob on how to be more calm, and he tells him to trim away the excess in life. He takes this to the extreme, and he turns into a crazy spiritual guru. Kendall and Kelly have to turn him back because the songs he writes now suck. They hire fake producers to insult his song until Gustavo gets so angry he turns back to normal. He decides they all should just stay the way they are. In episode 10, there's a big romance movie called Kiss and Tell coming out that night, and everyone wants a date to go see it. Carlos is sad because he doesn't have a girlfriend he can take, so Kendall and Joe agree to help him. They both find him a date, and Carlos can't decide on who he should take. Kendall and Joe keep pressuring him to choose their date, which is overwhelming him. He finally chooses one, but mixes up their names, and both girls are super offended. Joe decides to go to the mall with the girls instead of the movie. Logan meets a really sweet girl named Peggy. He likes her and asks her to go to the movie with him, and she agrees. Once there, Logan sees Camille and realizes he's still not over her. Peggy says it's okay, and she understands and leaves. He goes over to Camille, only to find out she already has a date. As for James, he helps Katie talk to a boy she likes. It goes well, and they plan to go on a date, but James gets super overprotective of her. He makes his own date follow the two around with him, and makes sure the boy doesn't try anything funny. Eventually, his date gets fed up and leaves. Katie acts annoyed, but ultimately ends up hugging James and thanking him for worrying about her. I'm proud of you, James. That was a sweet moment, and I actually didn't hate you in this episode. It ends with the boys sadly watching the movie together without dates. Episode 11 is another hour-long special. The boys remind Griffin that he agreed to let them use his Malibu beach house if they got a number one record, which they did. It's a number one record in Kerplankistan, but it still counts. He lets them use the house, and they take everyone at the Palmwoods with them. Okay, there are so many little stories going on in this one, so let's just blast through them. First is Gustavo. In the past, one of his groups went to the beach and got so absorbed in that lifestyle that they quit. He doesn't want the same thing to happen to the boys, so he and Kelly go there to try and make it such an awful day they'll never want to go back but all he really succeeds in doing is making his own day awful. Next, James meets a girl at the beach, and he and Camille think that she's secretly a mermaid. To no one's surprise, she's not. Mom is trying to put sunscreen on everyone, and they don't want it. Fine then, enjoy your painful sunburns, dummies. Now there is a huge, surprising guest star in this episode. Patchy the Pirate. That's right, Patchy the Pirate from Spongebob is in this one. Carlos and Logan find him, and they search for treasure together. The final storyline is about Kendall. Joe couldn't come because she's stuck at work. A big-time Rush fan named Sandy is at the beach, and she says that Kendall belongs to her and won't stop hanging all over him. He can't get rid of her, so he stands up to her and says they're never going to date. She gets upset, and her real boyfriend, Tad, shows up and challenges him to a drag race. If Kendall loses, 
he and his friends are never allowed to come back to the beach. Kendall wins, they all celebrate, and the boys sing a song. The end. In episode 12, the boys want to write their own song, but Gustavo says no. He doesn't trust them with that. They plan to have Gustavo leave the studio for a few hours so they can write a song while he's gone. Katie, Camille, and Buddha Bob run a spa at the Palmwoods, and the boys send Gustavo there to distract him for a bit. The boys try writing a song, but it results in them fighting. Kendall and Carlos like one idea, while Logan and James like the other. Bob lets it slip that the boys are writing a song, and Gustavo rushes back to the studio. Kelly shows up and tells the boys to combine their ideas. They do, and when Gustavo gets back, he says that the song actually doesn't sound bad. He helps them tweak it a bit, and they have their new song. In episode 13, Griffin shows up at their apartment with a camera crew and says that they're going to be in a reality TV show for more exposure. However, they're all too normal and nice, and the producer wants there to be drama and tension. They manufacture drama by convincing James and Carlos to fight each other all the time. Logan and Camille are forced to pretend to be in love despite being broken up, and a secret camera caught Kendall when his swim trunks fell down, and they won't give the footage back. Yeah, that's not weird and creepy at all. They go to complain to Griffin, but he loves it. He proposes that in the season finale, the viewers will vote on which member of the group will get kicked out and then someone will replace them. Really? We're doing this again? Also, remember when Kelly made Griffin promise to never do something like this to Big Time Rush again? They hide a bunch of cameras in Griffin's office and edit the footage together into a fake reality show. It shows him doing a bunch of weird stuff and they tell him that they'll post it online unless he cancels the show and he agrees. In episode 14, Gustavo is working with a girl group called Cat's Crew and gave them one of Big Time Rush's songs. The girls say that the studio is going to be theirs now, and the boys will end up just like boys in the attic. They look boys in the attic up, and they were one of Gustavo's old groups that he ended up replacing with a girl group. They meet them, and they're basically older, washed up versions of themselves. They don't want to end up like them, so they start pranking the girls to try to drive them away. The pranks all end up hitting Gustavo instead, though. Gustavo sits them down and says if he has to choose one of them, he's going to pick Big Tar Brush because they've always been by his side. The boys insist that he assigns Cat's crew too, because they were being jerks and they're also talented. Gustavo agrees, and they do a song together. We will never see Cat's crew again. In episode 15, they get assigned a project at school to work in pairs and find ways to make the palm woods greener. The group that comes up with the method that saves the most energy wins a week off from school. Everyone wants Logan as their partner because he's smart, but a scary guy named Ozzy steals him. It seems like he's making Logan do all the work, but eventually he realizes that Ozzy is just struggling with numbers and doesn't want to look stupid. Logan encourages him to ask for help and they develop a cute little friendship. James and Carlos are partners and all they can come up with is using a cow for dairy, but then they end up losing it and have to chase it all over the place. Joe is busy on set all week, so Kendall gets stuck working with Jet. He tries to come up with ideas for their project, while Jet just keeps using an insane amount of energy. Katie has a project where she has to visit a business and suggest ways for it to be greener, so she goes to Rock Records. She wants them to sign a paper saying that they'll use environmentally friendly cups instead of foam ones, but Griffin says no because the company makes them. She goes on the news and calls him out, and his stocks start to drop, so he's forced to stop using foam cups. Kendall decides that for their project, he'll just tie Jet up. This actually ends up saving the most energy, so they win a week off of school to go to the Capitol and share their idea with the governor. It's Mother's Day in episode 16, and James's mom shows up. She's here for her present, which is him coming home to train to take over the family cosmetic company. She's taking him home tonight. They tell Gustavo about it, and he says to just tell her no, but they inform him that you can't tell her no. There's a series of flashbacks of her being scary, and the boys being unable to deny her wishes. One of these things is that Logan's name actually used to be Hortense, and she told him to change it to Logan. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> This never gets brought up again. Are we really not going to acknowledge the fact that Logan's name used to be Hortense? Gustavo tries to confront her anyway, but she just kind of destroys him. They all try everything they can to convince her to let James stay, but nothing works. Meanwhile, Bitter's mom is in town. He lied to her and said that he's actually a vet. He doesn't want her to know that he's a hotel manager. His mom puts up ads everywhere to advertise his work as a vet, and a bunch of people show up at the Palm Woods with their pets. Bitter's and Katie work together to get through all the patients with the help of the internet. He also lied and said that he has a wife and son, so Katie and Buddha Bob pretend to be them. That's when someone goes up to Bitters and starts complaining about his room. His mom says that she knows what's really going on here. They are undercover CIA agents and were lying to protect her. They just roll with it and let her believe it. Back to the boys, they remember that the only time James's mom didn't get her way was when the other mom stood up to her. Carlos and Logan's moms arrive and the three confront her and get her to admit that she just misses James and wants him home. They set up a West Coast office for her so she can visit and get Gustavo to book more tour dates near home and she agrees to let James stay if it'll make him happy. In episode episode 17, the boys ask if they can have a prom, and Gustavo lets them after Kelly threatens him. James thinks he'll be voted prom king, but Kendall says usually the couple who has been together the longest wins, and that's him and Joe. He asks her to go with him, but she can't because she's grounded for a week due to breaking curfew. Logan wants James to win prom king so that Camille and her new boyfriend will lose. 
He thinks that if they win, he'll never have a chance to be with her again. James asks a celebrity named Aubrey to go with him, and she surprisingly agrees. The night of the prom, Kendall sneaks Joe out, and Buddha Bob pretends to be her to trick her dad. At the dance, there's security surrounding Aubrey, so James can't even get near her. He's frustrated because no one will vote for them if they can't even be near each other, and that's the whole reason he asked her. Aubrey starts to cry when she hears James say this, so her security gets mad and starts to chase him. Logan asks Camille to help them. He admits his reason for wanting James to win prom king, and she says he's cute. She agrees to swap outfits with James so the security won't recognize him. Back at the Palmwoods, Joe's dad discovers she snuck out, so he goes to the dance and drags them both back home. Gustavo and Kelly announce that Kendall and Joe won prom king and queen, but they aren't there. They decide to give it to second place, which is Camille and her boyfriend, but they decide not to accept since Camille looks like James right now. They say that whoever the spotlight lands on wins, and it's Logan and James. It ends with a bunch of cute prom pictures. In episode 18, Joe gets offered a part in a huge movie series, but she'll have to move to New Zealand for three years starting this week. She can only do it if she can get out of her contract for her current show, so she goes to talk to them about it. At the studio, Gustavo tells Carlos that he needs to stop wearing the helmet because it looks stupid. He runs away, and Gustavo tasks Kelly with getting rid of the helmet. Logan decides to help her because he's tired of him being so weird about the helmet and treating it like a person. After having an all-out war with him, he says that he just won't wear the helmet in shoots or treat it like a person, and all is well. A singer shows up at the studio to work on some music for three days, and she and James are drawn to each other. Her manager and Gustavo don't want the two getting attached since she's only there for a short time, so they decide to just have an entire romance, marriage and divorce included, in three days. After it's over, they're just like, okay, bye, and move on. Back to Joe, she says that she couldn't get out of her contract and will be staying. Katie tells Kendall that she read Joe's contract, and she's lying. She can get out of it. She didn't take the job because of Kendall. He feels bad, so he takes her on a date and acts like a disgusting jerk so that she'll break up with him and take the job, which she does. However, she thought about it and realized what he was trying to do and goes to talk to him about it. He tells her that it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and she has to take it. They spend their last day together laying in the park. The next day, they say their goodbyes, and Joe heads to the airport. Later, Kendall realizes he forgot to give her a goodbye kiss, so the boys rush him to the airport. He reaches her before she leaves, and they kiss. She sadly walks through the airport, and the boys sing worldwide, dressed in whites, and it kind of looks funny, them standing in the airport singing like that, and... Wait a minute! That's my suitcase! This is so random! <laughs> I did not expect to see my suitcase in this show. I... This really dates this thing. Well, if I ever want to be Joe from Big Time Rush sadly walking through the airport for Halloween, I guess I have my prop. In episode 19, Griffin is demanding an amazing hit song of the summer that rules the world by the end of the day. But Gustavo can't do it because of the pressure, and Kendall is too depressed about Joe. Griffin tells them to fix Kendall and finish the song. The boys try to cheer Kendall up, but it doesn't work. He says that they don't understand what he feels because they never lost their girlfriend in an instant before. Carlos asks a random girl to go out with him for 12 minutes, and then he gets really hung up on her after it ends. James asks one of the Jennifers to briefly date him. She does, but then she breaks up with him. This destroys James because he's never been broken up with before. Logan asks Camille to go out with him and then immediately break up with him, which she does, and he's the only one not left feeling depressed. Now Kendall and Logan are left to deal with a sad James and Carlos. Meanwhile, Gustavo is struggling to come up with a song. He remembers that the last time he had writer's block, Katie was there, so he asks for her help. She suggests seeing what's on the mind of teens, so they talk to some and they mention their weird quick relationships with the BTR boys. Gustavo decides to write a song about breakups, but the boys are too depressed when singing. They find the girl Carlos had a 12 minute relationship with and let him see her one last time, which cheers him up. Then they convince the Jennifer to go back out with James so he can break up with her, and that makes him feel better. Katie tells Gustavo that he should make the breakup song upbeat and danceable, and he likes that idea. The boys record the song, and the music video has their best green screen yet. In episode 20, the king of Kerplankistan, the country where they got their first number one, visits with his daughter. He wants her to pick one of the boys and marry them. Gustavo tells them to hide at the palm woods until he can figure out what to do about it, but James has to know if she would have picked him. He sneaks out to ask her and gives her a white rose. The king shows up and sees this and says that in Kerplankistan, that's a proposal and now they must get married. He says that they're on American soil, so it doesn't count. The king has a dirt boy who carries around soil from their country and throws some under James, so now he has to, and they lock him in a tower. Before they get married, James and the princess have to participate in the ceremony of secrets, where they tell each other their biggest secret. James says that he doesn't want to marry her, and the princess says that she doesn't want to marry him. She's actually in love with Dirt Boy. The BTR boys show up with a member of the State Department, who says that legally they can't get married here. They can only do it at the country's embassy where their rules don't apply, so naturally they take James there. But they crash the wedding and cause a huge mess. 
The king quickly tries to finish the ceremony, but they swapped James out with Dirt Boy. Now the two are married and everyone is happy. Oh, and the pointless side plot in this one is about mom having to pretend that she's married to Buddha Bob so he doesn't get deported to Canada. In episode 21, a new girl named Lucy arrives at the Palmwoods. She's an aspiring rock star. Carlos and James like her, so they keep trying to get her to go out with them, but she keeps rejecting them. She went through a bad breakup recently and isn't interested in a relationship. Lucy talks to Kendall and says Big Time Rush's music is cute, but it doesn't rock. This offends him, so he tells Gustavo about it. He's also offended and says that his songs do rock. Kelly says they don't because he writes pop music. The three work together to make a song that rocks. Meanwhile, Carlos and James have not given up in their pursuit of Lucy. She decides to ask both of them out and tells them to come to her apartment at the same time. When they arrive, they get mad and say that she can't take them both. To which Lucy says, oh, well then I guess we'll have to break up, but can we still be friends? And the two agree. Okay, that alone made me like Lucy. She's pretty smart and cool. Big Time Rush holds an impromptu concert in the middle of the street where they perform their new rockin' song, Paralyzed. Lucy sees it and admits they rock, and now they're all friends. In episode 22, Gustavo refuses to give the boys any breaks and keeps shocking them to get them to work. The boys have had enough of it, so they go on strike. They make a bunch of crazy demands, like a Sunday bar and a hot tub, which Gustavo refuses. Griffin says he wants a song done by tomorrow, so Gustavo brings them in to negotiate. Gustavo, we both know that I'm wearing a tie. He agrees to not shock them, but their other demands, like a petting zoo, are ridiculous. The boys don't back down though, and Gustavo fires them. He says that technically he's Big Time Rush since he owns them. He's going to do every part himself and edit it to look and sound exactly like them. As you may imagine, it doesn't go well. The boys get mom to be their new negotiator, and she gets Gustavo to agree to no shocking, a 30 minute break a day, and some respect. They get back together and write the song Superstar. In episode 23, Pop Tiger Magazine is holding a win a date with Big Time Rush concert. Four winners will get to spend the day with one of the boys and they'll have an exclusive party at the end of the night. However, a little boy named Bobby won the contest to hang out with Kendall, so he has to entertain him all day. He wants to go out with Katie, and even though Kendall wants to kill him for that, he has to let him so he doesn't tell Pop Tiger he had a bad day. He ends up trying to kiss Katie and she punches him, so he runs away. They have to find him by the end of the day or else they'll get banned from the magazine for losing a child. Eventually they find him and he seems really sad. Katie tells him that she'll dance with him once at the party if he apologizes. He does and says it's the best day ever. Logan gets stuck hanging out with an older woman who doesn't even know who Big Time Rush is, she just enters every contest she sees. Logan is bummed out and he has to run errands with her all day, but eventually realizes she's a nice lady. At the end of the day, she lets him take her niece to the party. As for Carlos and James, they both get normal pretty girls to hang out with. James likes Carlos's date though and begs him to switch. They tell them there was a mix up and they're actually supposed to have each other's date. As the day goes on, James realizes he actually likes his original date more and asks to switch back and they say it was a mix up again. James keeps flip flopping all day until Carlos yells at him about how these dates aren't about them. They're supposed to be showing some nice girls a great time. The girls have caught on and say that there was a mix up and they were both supposed to spend the day with Carlos and leave. The party at the end of the day is a success for everyone except James, who sadly eats food alone. In episode 24, Big Time Rush has finished their second album and nothing can stop them now. Except for maybe Hawk, who has been released from jail after kidnapping them. He breaks into their studio in a costume and steals the hard drive with their songs on it. Why are you dressed like that? Oh, I'm crazy now. He leaves and they call the police. The cops look at the security footage and say they can't determine who it is because of the costume. They tell him it's Hawk, but they're still like, yeah, but we can't tell yet. Hawk is re-recording all of Big Time Rush's songs under a new artist. The boys and Gustavo break into Hawk Records to steal the hard drive back, but Hawk shows up with the police. They say it's their hard drive and Hawk stole it. The police say they'll settle it by seeing what's on the hard drive, and it's a video of Hawk singing a song called I Love the Police. They get taken to jail and Kelly has to break them out. Back at the studio, James transforms into Bandana Man for the first time since the beginning of the series and starts calling them the Supertastic Super Six, and they'll break into Hawk Records in disguise. They dress up as superheroes and there's a cheesy comic book music video. They break in and start fighting. The cops show up and arrest Hawk because they tracked down the costume he was wearing in the security footage and found out that he was the one that bought it. The artist he had re-recording all their songs gives the hard drive back and all is well. In episode 25, the boys, Camille and Lucy, play a game where they admit the worst thing they've ever done to someone in the room. As kids, James threw out a note from a girl named Heather saying she liked Carlos because he liked her too. Carlos gets mad and tackles him. He says that she was the love of his life and he always thinks about her because she's a famous model now and oh my god, she's Liz Gillies. The boys tell James he needs to right the wrong, so he helps Carlos find the set Heather is working on. They show up and act like they're working on something there too. Carlos expects Heather to jump into his arms, but instead she's like, oh yeah, I remember you guys, we should catch up sometime. James and Carlos decide to recreate the camp they met Heather at and invite her to join them. At the end of the day, she tells Carlos that she likes James and asks him to give him a note that she wrote. Carlos almost throws it away, but ultimately decides to give it to James. He throws it away though, 
world because he wouldn't do that to his friend. The other main storyline in this episode involves Kendall and Camille. Lucy sees them together and thinks they're dating, so she tells Logan. He ends up spying on them, but in the end, it's revealed that they're just ice skating together. In episode 26, they're playing a video game together and start to argue. They realize that they can't spend five minutes together without fighting, and the boys, minus Kendall, move out. It's too expensive for them to each have their own apartments at the Palmwoods, so James steals the keys from a guy that's going to be on a kayak excursion for a while. Logan moves into the cabanas by the pool, and Carlos lives in a cardboard box in the park. Kendall asks Gustavo to yell at them and fix things, but he blows his back out so he can't move or yell, and tells Kendall to get the band back together. Kendall talks to them, and they all want the others to apologize to them. Katie says to manipulate them, so he just tells the others that they apologize and makes them a nice lunch. They get together and are like, why were we even fighting? Kendall suggests that they play video games together, and then they end up arguing again. Eventually, they come to the realization that the game is what's causing them to argue so much and decide not to play it anymore. Gustavo is healed and announces their world tour, and they rehearse by performing a song by the pool. Episode 27 is the final episode of the season. It's basically just a recap episode in the form of the boys being interviewed for backstage access, and it shows a bunch of highlights for each character. And that is season two. <sighs> It was a long one. Now, I do think there were a lot more interesting episodes in this one, and there was some drama too, like when Joe left and when Camille kissed James. They also did a bit better at focusing on their lives as Big Time Brush, but they still don't do it enough. I still think that there's way too much focus on their antics at the Palmwoods. I also struggle to believe that they're a boy band that's rising in fame. I think the reason for this is because aside from meeting some of their fans here and there, we don't really see them being famous. Take Hannah Montana, for example. There were a lot of episodes in that show of them doing silly things at school or at home, like in Big Time Rush. But in Hannah Montana, they never let you forget how popular she is because they were constantly showing her doing concerts or singing in front of people. As for Big Time Rush, anytime they're singing, it's either a music video or they're performing for their friends. Very rarely do we see them interact with their fans. Overall though, I would say that this season is an improvement over the first, and it had boyfriend in it, which is amazing. I did mention earlier that Paramount Plus had the episodes for the season out of order and I had to rearrange them. The reason for this is that they had the episode where Joe leaves way too early. So she left and then all of a sudden she's back again in the next episode and then five episodes later is when Kendall finally gets sad that she's gone. It was a mess and very confusing. But all right, I think it's time we get back to the character ranking. Hello and welcome back to Morgan's Character Ranking Corner. Here is the new ranking. As you can see, not much has changed. Gustavo is still the best, Kelly is still the MVP, and Logan is still the best member of the band. Kendall is still a nice, sensible guy, and Katie is still a cute, funny kid. I will say that I do think that they did a better job of incorporating Katie into the main plot of the episodes in this season, but there were still a lot of pointless storylines that were quite forgettable. I'm having a lot of fun pointing this around, if you can't tell. Also, don't make fun of my handwriting, okay? I have bad handwriting to begin with, and now I'm trying to write on a wall, and it's not easy, okay? Now, I moved mom down to the bottom because she doesn't really do much this season. I think they kind of forgot about her. Even though I don't like James, he doesn't deserve to be below a character who does nothing. Now, I actually almost moved James above Carlos this season. I still don't like him, but James feels like an actual character, whereas Carlos still is just giving me nothing. James has more of a personality and is involved in more interesting storylines, Carlos, I had a few storylines that focused on him this season, but they were still pretty lacking. And he's also just kind of a lacking character in general. Now, all that being said, why is Carlos still on top? Well, James, you had two moments this season that pissed me off enough that I could not bring myself to move you up on the list. The first is when you kissed Camille. You hurt my boy Logan, and that is not okay. But Logan forgave him, so I was willing to move on and give him another chance. Until the win a date with Big Time Rush episode. This is when he kept switching dates with Carlos for superficial reasons. It really rubbed me the wrong way. Then Carlos let him have it and told him he was being selfish, and they were there to show the girls a nice time. I thought that Carlos was really sweet and mature here, and I actually thought that it was his best moment in the series so far. And that is what kept Carlos on top. James, if you want to beat Carlos, you're going to have to get through the entirety of season three without being a total douche. Good luck. I don't know if you can do it. All right, that's gonna do it for me this season. I'll see you later. Back to me. Thanks, me. Okay, so in between seasons two and three, there's a big time rush movie. We're not gonna talk too much about it though. Basically, they go to London for their world tour, get involved with a bunch of spies, and save the world. It's one of those TV movies that's never acknowledged in the main series, and I'm not even sure if it's canon. I did want to mention it though. All right, so now it's time for season three. It's only 12 episodes long, which is significantly shorter than the rest of the series. I'm not really surprised by this though. I feel like it's pretty typical for shows like this to get shorter seasons the longer they go on. Let's begin, shall we? In episode one, they're backstage at the last show of their world tour. All throughout the episode, we see glimpses of them performing different songs. Yes, this is what I wanted! It's the Hannah Montana thing I was talking about where they're singing in front of an audience! It's like they listened to me, except they didn't because this show ended 10 years ago. Now, the actual storylines in this episode aren't anything special, but I'm willing to let it slide because I'm finally seeing them be a famous boy band. Basically, the boys are trying to be NSYNC's record for fastest time changing clothes between songs, which they eventually do. Carlos smuggled a French cricket out of the country and is trying to keep it as a pet, so an inspector shows up and tries to bust him. He eventually finds the cricket, but lets Carlos keep 
keep it after seeing how much he cares about it. Finally, Kelly finds out that the trampolines the boys are using have been recalled. She goes to tell them, but ends up getting pushed outside with a swarm of fans. She keeps trying to get back in, but security thinks that she's a fan and won't let her. After a lot of failed attempts, she gets back in, runs on stage, and holds up the trampolines from the bottom, saving the boys like the MVP she is. In episode two, the boys return to the Palm Woods now that their tour is over. They expect it to be like the last time they came back at the start of season two, when a bunch of new people moved in and didn't know who they were, but it's actually the opposite. They're famous now and everyone is super excited they're back. Okay, again, this is what I've been wanting. Logan decides that he wants Camille back, but he doesn't want to be the one to make the first move. Camille also wants Logan back, but she doesn't want to be the one to make the first move. Wait, what happened to the guy she was dating? In the end, they decide to run into each other's arms at the same time, so they're both making the first move, and they're officially back together. Meanwhile, James calls dibs on Lucy, and according to their dibs rules, Kendall isn't allowed to talk to her. Naturally, Lucy tries to talk to Kendall, and he has to explain that he's not allowed to talk to her since James called dibs on her. Lucy says that's stupid, and decides to call dibs on Kendall, so every girl starts avoiding him. Kendall begs James to just ask Lucy out so she can either accept or reject him and the whole dibs thing can be over. He does, she says she's not ready for a boyfriend, and then she undibs Kendall. As she walks away, she winks at him, giving Kendall the impression that she's interested in him. At the studio, Griffin and Gustavo are arguing over which of Big Time Rush's new singles they should release on the radio tomorrow. They ask Carlos to pick which one, but they both end up pressuring him to pick the song they want. When the boys go on the radio, Carlos picks neither song and instead plays the one that he likes the best, which is Windows Down. When this song started playing, I was shocked because I had no idea that this was by Big Time Rush. I've heard it so many times and it was really popular when it came out, but I never would have guessed that it was Big Time Rush. I was literally sitting there like, is this a cover? <laughs> There's no way that this is their song and I didn't know. Obviously, I can't play it, but it's the one that goes, woohoo. <laughs> I can't do it justice, just go listen to it. It slaps. In episode three, the boys keep getting ambushed by paparazzi at the Palm Woods and a girl named Winnie, one of their fans, breaks into their apartment. Gustavo says they need to move now. The Palm Woods is home of the future famous and they're actually famous now and need to be protected. He moves them to a house in Bel Air and the boys sing the Fresh Prince theme song but change the lyrics to be about moving to Bel Air. Once they get there, they discover that Fabio is their neighbor. The lemons from his tree keep falling into their yard and Katie uses them to make lemonade and sell it, which results in the two fighting throughout the episode. Life isn't so great for the boys either. There are a bunch of strict rules they have to follow and they're bored without all of their friends at the Palm Woods. Not only that, but everyone living there seems kind of cultish and creepy. They decide they want to move back, but the residents threaten them and tell them that they can't leave. It'd be bad if people found out that someone wanted to leave Bel Air, because it's supposed to be so amazing there. As all of this is going on, Gustavo and Kelly are getting frustrated because they can't get through the gate to see the boys since their names aren't on the list. Eventually, Gustavo gets so mad that he crashes a big truck through the gate so he can move the boys out of there. They jump in the back, and Fabio comes too because he also hates it there for some reason. The creepy cultish neighbors chase after them, but they're saved by their crazy fan Winnie, who runs into them on a Segway to save them. Back at the Palm Woods, they still have a paparazzi problem, but Winnie hides in the bushes and hits them with tranquilizers, so all is well. In episode four, Logan tells Camille that they should limit their dates to two nights a week because data suggests that overexposure with a partner leads to breakups. This makes her mad, so she agrees to go on a date with Jet. Logan says that they're just too different and he needs to find a girlfriend that's more like him, so he finds a date online. Her name is Lindsay and she's basically just the female version of him. Carlos scores a date with one of the Jennifers, but Katie and James are worried about him ruining it with helmets or corn dogs, so they decide to follow him to make sure it all goes well. Kendall runs into Lucy, who has a wig on and is dressed all prim and proper. Her parents are in town and she's pretending to study classical music and says Kendall is her friend from the conservatory. Her parents think she's in LA on a violin scholarship and would be very disappointed if they found out she was trying to become a rock star. Kendall goes along with it and gives her parents a tour of the Palm Woods. Afterwards, they suggest he comes to dinner with them. Everyone ends up at the same restaurant that night, including Camille and Jet, who suggests that they have a double date with Logan and Lindsay, but Camille and Logan just end up arguing the whole time. James disguises himself as a waiter and Katie hides in a bush. They do everything they can to make sure Carlos impresses Jennifer. It goes well until James's disguise falls off and Carlos realizes it's him. He gets mad that he was helping him and pushes him into one of the dining carts, sending him rolling away. He bumps into Logan and Camille, which makes them want to make out, so they're back together. Then he bumps into Lucy, causing her wig to fall off and her parents learn the truth. They say they're disappointed in her and Kendall says they should be proud. She sings a song with the boys and her parents are impressed. They end up all having dinner together and Lucy grabs Kendall's hand at the table. Logan asks Camille why they break up so often and she says it's because they like making up so much. See, this is why I don't love you two together. In episode five, Big Time Rush is getting merch. However, the merch that Griffin's marketing team came up with are toilet scrubbers, horse shampoo, and dolls that say dumb things. Of course, Griffin loves it though. He says that they're unique and Sam Selmart will love them in his over 9,000 stores. They decide that they need to make better merch to present to Sam. James and Logan work together to make a perfume, while Kendall and Carlos record better lines for the dolls. Kelly calls Griffin's marketing team and tells them that Sam is sick 
and will have to cancel their meeting, and they all go to see Sam in their place. They present the dolls, but they say things like, you're a jerk, because Gustavo accidentally put the wrong audio files on them. They let him test the perfume, but it nearly blinds him, because James put hot sauce in it when Logan told him to add some spice. Griffin finds out and makes them go apologize to Sam, and he presents the original products. Sam is now in a hospital bed, but agrees to see the merch. However, he says, I hope this is better than the horse shampoo and toilet scrubbers Katy Perry tried to sell me. Griffin throws those out and shows him the dolls with the original dumb quotes. Sam says he'd rather them be action dolls, and they tell them that they fight crime and fly. Griffin throws the doll to make it fly, but it hits a button on Sam's bed that ejects him and sends him flying. Now Sam has stopped selling their music in his stores, which is bad because that's how they get a lot of their album sales. They decide to sneak into his place using some awesome tree hats and sing to him to remind him of how great their music is. He sees the tree hats and loves them and wants to sell them. He agrees to sell their music again along with the dolls and the perfume, except they use the perfume as bug spray. In episode 6, Kendall decides that he's finally going to ask Lucy out. He heads out to do it, but the elevator doors open and Lucy is there with her ex, Bo. Katie says that he's the hottest guy in the Palmwoods, which offends James and Jet, so they want him gone. Kendall and Katie are surprised by how well Lucy is getting along with Bo, since she's mentioned that he broke her heart, and he wants to get to the bottom of it. At the studio, Griffin shows up and Gustavo assumes that he's going to ask him to write a song by the end of the day like usual, but he has a different request this time. He wants to be kidnapped. He is a CEO, so he could be kidnapped at any time, and he wants to be prepared. Gustavo does not want to do it, so he asks Carlos and Logan to. They push him in a recycling bin and lock it, but then it gets taken away. They chase after it to the recycling plant. The employees tell them that whatever was in the bin was probably already shredded by now. They're horrified, thinking they killed Griffin, but surprise, he's back. He installed a CEO finding microchip in his head. It alerted his assistant, who came and got him. Griffin was able to test the microchip thanks to the boys. Back at the Palmwoods, Kendall, James, and Jet are spying on Lucy and Bo. James tries to read her lips, and it's honestly one of his funniest moments. I like to look around, I'm unattractive. Now I'm getting up and going somewhere that's not here. Now's your chance. Kendall talks to her when she's alone. She says that he cheated on her, but he spent the last hour saying it's a huge mistake. Girl, run! Don't believe him! Kendall asks her if she's going to get back together with him, and she says she's not sure. It's complicated. He decides to give her space because he knows that he would be confused if Joe came back. That is until he sees Bo making out with another girl in the elevator. Bo says that Lucy will never believe him because it'll seem like he's just trying to break them up. Kendall tells Camille that he saw Bo kissing another girl, and she gets mad and says she hates him. Camille, I love the enthusiasm and support for your friend, but um, didn't you do the same thing to Logan? They decide to have Camille ride up and down the elevator in hopes that Bo will see her and try to kiss her and James and Jet will get it on video. It results in a silly scene of them all going up and down the elevator and missing each other. It ends with Camille ending up in the same elevator as Lucy and Bo and being introduced to him. Now that he knows Camille is Lucy's friend, there's no way he'll try to kiss her. So they dress up James and Jet as girls to try and woo him. Bo attempts to kiss them and Kendall gets the whole thing on video, but Bo destroys the camera. It doesn't matter though because Lucy heard the whole thing and tells him to get out of there. She and Kendall get in the elevator together and she thanks him. He finally asks her out and the two kiss. But then the elevator doors open and Joe is on the other side. Dun dun dun! Episode 7 picks up where the last one left off. Joe is back because the studio tested the first movie and hated it and cancelled the sequels. Kendall runs away from the girls and hides. He likes them both but doesn't know what to do about it. At the studio, Griffin hires Katie to run Rock Records and she makes them tons of money. She gives it back to Gustavo at the end of the day though. We're not gonna get too involved in this story though because it's pretty pointless like most Katie plots and I want to focus on the drama. Kendall overhears Lucy saying that if he picks Joe, it's okay but she'll save herself the broken heart by leaving the Palmwoods. And then Joe says the same thing. Kendall doesn't know what to do so Katie encourages him to take a walk to clear his head. On his walk, he sees a bunch of things that remind him of Lucy. So he goes to the Palmwoods, knocks on Joe's door, and chooses her. Uh, wait, what? But all of the signs were pointing to Lucy! I'm not gonna lie, I was actually Team Lucy here. You see, I thought that I liked Joe, but once she left, I realized I liked it better when she was gone because it gave Kendall more time to shine on his own and with the boys. When they were together, it became too much of Kendall's personality. I don't love Logan and Camille, but at least Camille doesn't take over Logan's personality. Also, Lucy actually gets along with the guys really well. I think she fits into the group better. I also realize that Joe is kind of a bland character. I find Lucy a lot more interesting, and I really like how she handles things, like the Dibs situation, or when both James and Carlos wouldn't stop asking her out. I actually think that Kendall has way more chemistry with Lucy, and he'd be able to have a more mature relationship with her than Joe. I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion, but I really wish he would have picked Lucy. Now I did some research, and apparently Kendall was actually supposed to pick her, but then the actress playing Lucy had to leave for another role, so they changed it to Joe. So that would explain why all the signs were pointing to Lucy, but I ended up picking Joe anyway. But in the end, whoever Kendall picked in this situation, he was kind of a dick. He said in the last episode that if Joe came back, he would be confused. 
If that's the case, then he shouldn't have pursued anything with Lucy. If he knew that he still liked Joe and wouldn't know what to do if she came back, he should have waited a bit longer to sort out his feelings because that's not fair to either of them. Now you could say that Lucy did the same thing with Bo, but I kind of want to give her a pass because her ex was a horrible, manipulative jerk. He was a toxic guy who still had some sort of mental hold on her. That's not the case with Kendall. He needed to have this conflict before Joe came back and before he decided to ask Lucy out. It's not fair to Lucy to have to go through what she did with Bo and then have Kendall do that to her on the same day. And it's not fair to Joe that she had to wait around for Kendall to decide who she likes more. So yeah, those are my thoughts on that. <laughs> Let's move on. In episode eight, thanks to Big Time Rush's success, Gustavo was able to sign the fourth greatest guitarist of all time, Baby Lace. He's going to be inducted into the Hall of Rock tonight. He and Kelly have to go there to make sure everything is ready for him. So the boys have to babysit him because he's kind of insane and prone to frequent heart attacks. They take him to the apartment and he immediately falls out the window and lands on a chair by the pool. Kendall and Logan chase after him, but mom keeps James and Carlos from going. She's going somewhere and needs them to babysit Katie without her finding out that they're babysitting her. Katie keeps trying to leave to go to the convenience store to play the new arcade game and they try to stop her, which is hard because Katie is honestly smarter than them. But by the end of the day, she decides to stay because it's more fun to hang out with them. Kendall runs into Joe and things are awkward. She said it was weird to see him kiss Lucy and then wait all day to decide who he likes more. That's what I said! Baby Lace says that all Joe can think about is him kissing Lucy, so he needs to replace the memory with a good one. Then he has a heart attack. They decide to set up a picnic for Joe, but Baby Lace eats some of the shrimp even though he's allergic and falls over and ruins everything. When Joe shows up, Kendall tells her there's a complication with the picnic, but accidentally calls her Lucy and she walks off. Okay, uh, first, um, diagnose the problem. He looks dead. They give Baby Lace an allergy injection and he's fine. He suggests that Kendall write Joe a love song. He does and they all go to perform it for her, but Baby Lace has a heart attack again, ruining the moment. Kendall decides to just talk to her and ask if they can start over. She agrees and he asks her to go to the Hall of Rock ceremony with him. Big Time Rush gets their first gold record in episode nine. Carlos, James, and Kelly want to know what their music sounds like in gold. So they harass Gustavo until he lets them listen to it. They play the record and it's not even their song. It's just some random record that they spray painted gold. Katie and Buddha Bob strike oil in the park and start an oil company. Bitters forces himself in on the business, but then Bob and Katie realize that they've drilled into a pipeline. They tell Bitters, but he thinks that they're lying so they can keep all the money for themselves. But then Bitters gets in trouble for drilling into a pipeline. As for Kendall, he got Joe's birthday mixed up. He thought it was on the 23rd, not the 21st. He now doesn't have the money to get the necklace he wanted to give her since he won't get paid until tomorrow. Logan says he'll pay for half of it and he can just pay him back later. However, Camille sees Logan with it and assumes he got it for her for their 15 month anniversary. Okay, there's no way these two have been together for 15 months. They were broken up for most of season two and then didn't get back together until the boys got back from tour. And that was not 15 months ago. Things aren't adding up, Camille. For the entire episode, Logan and Kendall keep finding excuses to take the necklace so they can let the other girl have it for a while, which results in it breaking in half. Camille and Joe figure out what they're up to, but they're not mad. They say the sentiment is sweet and they just didn't want to disappoint them. They say that they can just turn the two halves of the necklace into bracelets and they have a birthday slash anniversary dinner together. In episode 10, the boys went to go camping, but Gustavo says they can't because their contract prohibits them from doing anything dangerous. Joe tells the boys she knows where they could camp that's not dangerous, but it's a secret spot so she'll have to come. They say it's boys only and girls aren't good at camping. Camille and the Jennifers overhear this and want to prove them wrong and it turns into a girls versus guys camping trip. Joe's secret spot turns out to just be a set at the studio she works at. Apparently, Gustavo put trackers on the boys and finds out they're on a soundstage. He says that they're going to get hurt and Kelly is like, oh my god, you're worried about them. He ignores that and plans to break in there and make them go home. Back at the set, the girls have food, chairs, tents, and layers for the cold. They're better at camping than the boys in every way. Gustavo has arrived and sees them on the security cameras and is worried they'll catch a cold. Kelly says he sounds like a caring person. The boys get fed up and go to find food and warmer clothes. Logan puts on a bear costume, but then gets dragged into a commercial to do a stunt where he gets beat up by ninjas. The girls notice that the guys have been gone for a while, so they go to look for them. One of the Jennifers gets caught by a security guard and put in a jail cell. James distracts the guard while Carlos breaks her out. She's so moved by him saving her that she kisses him. The others show up just in time to save Logan from getting beat up by ninjas. Gustavo arrives and says that he remembers what it's like to have fun, but now he knows what it's like to be a parent and he was worried. Oh, that's so sweet. Carlos says that he still needs to let them do things though, so Gustavo lets them camp outside Rock Records. In episode 11, Carlos is dating the Jennifer that he saved in the last episode, but she won't let him do anything that he likes and forces him to have all the same interests as her. At Rock Records, Katie and Gustavo get locked in his safe. The password is something he loves, but he can't think of anything. Eventually, the walls start to close in on them. They think they're going to die, and Gustavo tells Katie that she and the boys are his family. Suddenly, the door to the safe opens because that was his password, the something he loves. Another cute Gustavo moment. Logan and James are running a dog adoption. Not all of them get homes though, meaning they'll have to be put down. They take them all to the palm woods, but Bitter says that pets aren't allowed unless they're stars. They put all the dogs in a Big Time Rush music video, making them stars, and then they find them all homes. Kendall and Joe decide to show Carlos what a healthy relationship is like. They do activities that the other 
Tyler likes. And Carlos is like, oh my god, Joe does things that Kendall likes to do. Jennifer waves her finger in his face and he goes back to listening to her. Kendall thinks that Jennifer is a witch and putting a spell on Carlos. They later discover that every time she waves her finger, she kisses him, causing Carlos to not think straight. The kiss is the spell and they have to break it. Mom shows up and she can't feel her lips thanks to the medical cream she got from the dentist. They take it and give some to Carlos, telling him it's chapstick. He can't feel his lips anymore, making Jennifer's kiss ineffective. He breaks up with her by eating a corn dog. Episode 12 is the last episode of the season, and it's just a blooper episode, so there isn't anything to say about it. Season 3 is complete. It was a lot shorter than the other two, but I think I enjoyed it the most so far. They finally feel like a famous boy band, and they're doing a great job of working it into the plots of the episodes. And as annoyed as I am with Kendall for the Lucy Joe drama, and as much as I wish he picked Lucy, I must admit, I was invested. <laughs> Though I will say, I was right. Once Joe came back, almost all of Kendall's storylines revolved around her. That's something I hope they improve on in the last season. If he's gonna be with Joe, fine, but let him be a character outside of that. Now let's check out the character ranking. Welcome back to Morgan's Character Ranking Corner. As you can see, nothing has changed. These three are still the best, Mom got even more boring somehow, and Kendall and Katie are still cool. I thought about moving Kendall down for the whole Joe-Lucy stuff, but I'm gonna give him another chance. He's been a good guy up until this point, and I don't want to let one moment define him. Carlos and James. Now, do I think that James is a better written, more funny, and interesting character than Carlos? Yes. Did James get through the entire season without being a douche? Yes. Did Carlos once again give me absolutely nothing in season three? Yes. If that's the case, then you may be wondering why I didn't move James up. That is because I don't want to. <laughs> If James was a real person, he would be so mad that I was not moving him up on this list, and I think that's funny. I hold all the power here, and I will not move him up because I know that's what he wants. Now back to me. Okay, we only have one season left. Season four is also only 12 episodes. We've been on a long journey with these boys, and I'm a little sad to see it coming to an end, but we must press on. Here we go, season four. In episode one, the boys are having a spitball fight, and... Oh. My god. <laughs> You're, uh... Your hair! It's... It's so much better! Sorry, Carlos. Okay, I will admit it, James. In this season, you are the pretty one. But wow, now he does not look like a teenager at all. That is a full-grown man. If I'm doing my math right, which I might not be, I suck at math. <laughs> I think James was actually 23 here, give or take a year. And if that's the case, no wonder people think that I'm 14. If that's what James looks like at 23, and this is what I look like at 24, I'm a baby. Anyway, Logan says that this year is going to be great. They're recording their third album, they're about to announce their summer tour, and he has cooler hair. Yeah, but Logan, did you see James's hair? Uh-oh, One Direction and a bunch of other British boy bands are doing the same thing. It's a British invasion that'll leave BTR in the dust, according to some guy on TV. Griffin thinks they should surrender. Boy bands are over and the studio will now be used to find the next wave of music. Remember when Kelly made Griffin promise that he'd never do anything like this to Big Time Rush again? James and Logan suggest that Gustavo is spread too thin and that they should find a new manager. This understandably upsets Gustavo and he quits. Now they all have to find a new manager. Kendall and Carlos like one, while James and Logan like the other. They end up arguing and signing with different managers who sign them up for different gigs. Back at the Palmwoods, it's the day a new wave of people will be moving in and Katie is hoping to meet her new BFF who she can talk about boys with. Buddha Bob says she can talk about boys with him. She says no he can't, and that hurts his feelings. A bunch of businessmen move in because Bitters is turning the place into a business residence. Katie and Bob drive them off by killing the free Wi-Fi. Now Katie's new BFF can move in, but this time a bunch of boys show up. Katie talks about them with Bob, and she apologizes for saying he couldn't talk about boys earlier. As for Big Time Rush, they end up sabotaging each other's gigs by shooting spitballs. The managers get fed up and tell them that their careers are over. The boys come back together and fire them, with spitballs. Gustavo and Kelly show up, and they ask him to be their manager again. He agrees, but they all still don't know what to do about the British invasion. Mom tells them to dance and sing like no one is watching, and Gustavo should write songs because that's what he loves doing. They need to not worry about sales and have fun. She says that she'll handle Griffin. She threatens him, and he welcomes the boys back. They sing a song where they dress up in the style of different boy bands through the years. The episode ends with them all sitting around the pool with Katie and talking about boys with her, which is pretty cute. In episode two, Gustavo tells the boys it's important that they don't get in a scandal, but then Lucy's first album comes out and she wrote a song about how Kendall dumped her for Joe and is a jerk. Gustavo and Kelly try to talk to the news and say that the song isn't about him. Carlos wants to be off of an old lady, 
The reporters see it, record it, and now the news says he slapped a granny. To get some good publicity, they try to get footage of Logan helping an old lady pick up her purse, but she almost falls over, which makes it look like he's stealing it, and now it's all over the news. Luckily, they find security footage which shows what really happened, and their names are cleared. Kendall and Joe go to talk to Lucy and ask if she's going to reveal that her song is about him, and she says that she won't. But before they leave, Kendall says that the song isn't really accurate because they weren't actually dating. This obviously upsets Lucy, and she says that now she's going to reveal that the song is about him at her press conference. Yet another Another dick move, Kendall. You asked her out and then kissed her. Your intent was to date her and you would be if Joe didn't come back. Poor Lucy, he has not been treating her well. Katie helps James get good press by singing with Brit Pop Princess Cher Lloyd. And by singing with her, I mean he sneaks into the recording booth, poses behind her while Katie takes a picture, and posts it online. Now everyone thinks they're doing a song together. Naturally, Cher confronts him about this. She says it's fine, but after she's done shooting her music video, she'll release a statement saying that they were just messing around and there is no song. So James goes to her music video shoot and keeps popping up in the background. The fans love it though, so Cher is cool with it. Kendall, Joe, Bob, Camille, and Jet disguise themselves as reporters and go to Lucy press conference. Every time she tries to reveal who her song is about, they ask her a dumb question to distract her. Then the rest of the boys show up and shout that maybe the boy the song is about isn't a jerk, he was just really confused. This makes Lucy reconsider, and she says that the song isn't about anyone. Then she moves back into the palm woods. In episode three, Kendall is acting super weird because he doesn't want Lucy to come between him and Joe. Lucy says she's not there to pursue Kendall. Her album is about being strong and doing what makes you happy. The palm woods makes her happy, so she came back. She asks to be friends with him and Joe. They agree, but are super weird about it. Oh yeah, and James is back to pursuing Lucy now. Later, Kendall runs into Lucy in the elevator. She corners him and says, you know what happens next. He freaks out and runs away. Mom says he should tell Joe about what happened, and Katie says he should lie. He decides to lie, but every time he does, Buddha Bob accidentally lights his pants on fire. He ends up running out of pants to wear, so he has to put on a pair of his mom's. Eventually, the three confront each other. Lucy admits that she's not interested in Kendall anymore. She was just trying to make some drama for her to write a song about. Now that she's over him, she needs inspiration. Joe says that he's good for inspiration, and they both laugh at his pants and walk off, so they're friends now. There are two side stories in this episode. One is about James and Carlos playing soda bowling, which causes the bottle to explode in Gustavo's office and destroy everything. They don't want to face his wrath, so they pretend they got kidnapped. The other is about Logan and Camille. She wants to go to a shadow acting water play with him, and he doesn't, so he pretends to be sick. She takes him to see Doc Hollywood, and he ropes him into the lie. It results in them pretending they have a contagious virus, so they have to quarantine in a bubble together. Camille figures out they're lying, but it turns out they really did develop fevers. She says if Logan didn't want to go, he should have just said so. They feel bad, so they go to the play with her in the bubble. Camille ends up hating it, but Doc and Logan surprisingly love it. In episode four, the boys complain that they don't have enough money. Kelly says that Griffin put it into an account that they can't access until they're 21, so they don't waste it. Griffin decides to give each of them 5K, and if they haven't wasted it by five o'clock tomorrow, he'll consider giving them access to the rest. As you may imagine, they end up wasting it. James spends his money on a snake to try and impress Lucy, which doesn't work. Logan tips a few people, so they do nice things for him. He takes this to the extreme and gives everyone around him money just to do things like laugh at his jokes. Carlos hires a personal assistant, and Kendall accidentally buys 5,000 oranges instead of $5,000 worth of orange stock. <laughs> They're all out of money, and Carlos' assistant says that they should sell the oranges to his old boss. He likes to bathe in them because he thinks they keep the goblins away. They make all their money back and present it to Griffin. He says that he'll give them access to their accounts now, but they all say that they'll wait until they're 21 and run away. Griffin says that he has to go. He scored a sweet deal on a truckload of oranges. Okay, I kind of love the setup to this joke. I did not expect Griffin to be the old boss that bathes in oranges to keep goblins away. <laughs> But it honestly makes so much sense. In episode five, Gustavo gets the boys a cameo on a popular sitcom for teens. Kendall, James, and Logan don't want to do it, but ultimately agree because Carlos has a crush on the lead actress, Dara. They get there and the script makes the boys look like total idiots. Katie, Kelly, and Gustavo go to talk to the writers about it, but they left on a three hour break. So they just rewrite the script themselves. Dara also likes Carlos, but she has an evil stepmom who runs her life and basically controls the set. She ruins any attempt Carlos makes to get close to Dara. She said that if he doesn't stay away, she'll ruin their careers by posting on Dara's social media that Big Time Rush made her cry. She also demands that the boys get written out of the script, but we all know who the writers are now. While all of this is going on, James and Logan crash the Yo Gabba Gabba set and sing a song about sharing with them. When the boys still show up in the episode, the evil mom throws a fit and threatens them all. Katie records the whole thing and says that she'll post it. The mom quickly changes her attitude and acts nice now. At the end of the episode, the boys comment that if they had their own show, they wouldn't use cartoony sound effects, cheap costumes, or have completely random, out of nowhere celebrity cameos. Oh my God, Fred. In episode six, the boys are on tour buses headed to their next show, but get stuck in traffic. Victoria Justice is their opening act, and she has to solve her time by performing every single one of her songs. Carlos has been posting little vlogs of their life online, and Kendall sees a mean comment about him and Joe. There are multiple people who hate their relationship. James video calls from the other bus. When Kendall asks him about it, he's like, oh yeah, people say you're like brother and sister. You know, 
They're kind of right. It turns out that everyone except Kendall knew that they have haters, and they didn't tell him because they knew he'd get upset. He starts replying to all the haters, saying they're wrong, but he just gets more hate comments back. The others tell him that he needs to ignore those comments. The haters don't bother them because of all their fans who say nice things about them, and they show Kendall. They decide to film a fun little music video for their fans, and the traffic finally lets up. They make it to the concert just as Victoria has exhausted the last of her songs. In episode 7, it's been a year since the last prank war. There's really not much to say about this one. It's just a repeat of the last prank episode, except this time the adults join in and mom wins. There's really only one important thing that happens. Lucy is about to get hit with a confetti gun, and James jumps in front of her to save her. He says that he can't let anything hurt her, and she's really touched by that. They almost kiss, but then she gets hit with confetti. In episode 8, the boys see a motorcycle for sale and want to buy it, but mom says absolutely not. They all walk off, except for James. Lucy sees him standing by it and assumes it's his, and she's super into it, so James buys the bike. Lucy agrees to go on a date and bike ride with him later that night. Katie finds out and says that mom is going to kill him, but he gets her to help him learn how to ride anyway. It doesn't go well though, and he keeps falling off of it. That night, when Lucy shows up for the date, James accidentally rides the bike through the wall. Lucy says the date is off and runs away, and mom is definitely going to kill James. Meanwhile, Joe needs to learn how to drive stick shift for her new role, and asks asks Kendall to teach her. He says no, because every time they try to help each other with something, they end up arguing. She ends up convincing him though, and uh, yep, they argue a lot. They start to wonder if maybe they should break up when the car starts rolling backwards. Kendall yells to pull the brake up. We need to break up. The car stops at the last second, and they say that they think they did just break up. Now that they're just friends, they think maybe the lessons will go better now that they're not a couple, but they still fight. They end up laughing and getting back together. In episode 9, Logan is going to take his medical admissions test, and once he aces it, he's sure that they'll tell him he can skip college and go right to being a doctor. Logan makes Carlos take the test with him because he thinks that he's a good luck charm. When he's next to him, good things happen. However, Logan ends up failing the test, and Carlos gets every single answer right. Carlos starts running around saying he's a doctor and prescribing people corn dogs. Logan thinks his life is over now that he can't be a doctor. Uh, Logan, did you forget that you're in a super famous boy band? He decides to start training under bitters to become a manager. Meanwhile, James shows up and is sad. He says Lucy left for her European tour, and she really won't be his. Kendall tells him that Lucy is on a tour far, far away, and he needs to move on. Uh, Kendall, Joe went far, far away, and you didn't move on. Also, Big Time Rush has gone on multiple tours at this point, and both you and Logan have maintained relationships during that. Anyway, this somehow results in James making him take Pop Tiger friendship quizzes, and he gets all the answers wrong. James gets more depressed and quote unquote breaks up with Kendall. He's eventually able to cheer him up though and encourages him to go down to the pool and flirt with other girls. Carlos admits to Logan that he just guessed on the test. Then Logan saves bitters from choking on a corn dog, and he tells him that he shouldn't be a manager, he needs to try being a doctor again. Oh, also, Griffin basically turns into Jigsaw in this episode and locks Kelly Gustav and Katie in the studio until they test all of his new products. In episode 10, two big companies have approached Big Time Rush with huge deals. One is a cartoon, and the other is a video game. The video game would require physically demanding motion capture, canceling a concert in Hawaii, and they'd have to wear these green suits. They choose the cartoon. The creator of Fairly Odd Parents, Butch Hartman, arrives at the studio. He wants to make a cartoon where they sing and fight crime with magical shoes. They hate this idea and decide to go with the video game instead. They have to wear the green suits, and the room they're in is super cold to keep the equipment from overheating. They go outside to warm up, but the door locks behind them. They don't want to be seen in such ridiculous outfits, so they run and hide in a dumpster. When they come back out, there's no one around. They see on the news that everyone thought that they were aliens and federal authorities were called in to capture them. They eventually escape the agents and decide to do the cartoon again. They suggest new ideas to Butch, and we actually get to see the cartoon, which is about them being captured by aliens and escaping. Also, the side plot in this one is about Bob getting hit on the head, and now he acts like Cosmo from Fairly Odd Parents, and he has his voice too. It it's weird. In episode 11, Big Time Rush has just released their third album. Griffin says that in every boy band, after the third album, one of the members breaks off and becomes successful doing something else. He basically tells them that Big Time Rush is over and they all need to try and break out. Remember when Kelly made Griffin promise to never do something like this to Big Time Rush again? James starts working on a solo album, Logan decides to become a game show host, and Carlos tries to become a Broadway star. Kendall doesn't want this and talks to Gustavo about it, but he says that he can't do anything about it because what Griffin says goes. Kendall says that maybe Griffin is just a big turd. Thank you, Kendall. I think the same thing. Gustavo gives him two hours to get the band back together. He talks to all of them and they admit that they don't want to break out either. They were just scared the others would leave them behind. Now their only issue is Griffin. Throughout the entire episode, Katie has been voting for Big Time Rush in the Tween Choice Awards on multiple devices and gets them five nominations. This is enough to convince Griffin to let them stay together. We have reached episode 12, which is an hour-long special, not just because it's the last episode of season four, but it is the last episode of the series. It's the day before the Tween Choice Awards and Big Time Rush will be performing a song. As they practice, we see a man watching them and laughing evilly. Later, the boys are filming a commercial for Sharky's Mac and Cheese. At the end, they hold up a QR code, and if you put on a special pair of 3D glasses,
glasses, it'll reveal a secret code for you to get the chance to win a lifetime supply of mac and cheese. Martin Sharkus, owner of Sharky's Cheese, shows up and laughs evilly. He has a plan. During the commercial, he's going to fire a hypno beam that will cause anyone looking at the code with the glasses to crave Sharky's mac and cheese 24-7. The day of the awards, Lucy arrives. James butts into her interview and is like, hey, you left without saying goodbye. Meanwhile, Sharkus screens the commercial for Gustavo and Griffin, and they can't stop eating mac and cheese. Mom accidentally washed her and Katie's VIP passes in the dishwasher, so they can't go to the awards. Katie is really upset because she wanted to meet Austin Mahone, so Mom invites all of their friends over for a fun party. Speaking of Austin, he's supposed to present an award with Lucy. James asks if he can present with her instead, and he agrees. While on stage, James confronts her about leaving, and Lucy says that she came back for him, and they kiss. I gotta be honest, I don't really like James and Lucy together. It feels really forced and random, especially after Lucy had zero interest in him for such a long time. It just feels like since their original plan to have her with Kendall didn't work out, they made her get with James. They had almost no development, and it was all shoved into the last few episodes of the series. Jeez, there is not a single relationship in this show that I'm impressed by. Logan wants to find the room where they keep all the goop that they drop on people. Goop is basically the show's version of slime from the Teen Choice Awards. They search for it and end up on a weird, empty floor. They open a door and end up in Sharkus's control room. He sends his cheese men after them, and they chase them into the goop room. Then Alexa, the lead actress from Spy Kids, shows up, beats up the cheese men, and teleports away. This episode's kind of weird. The boys run into the Jennifers, who say that they miss Carlos and want him to pick one of them as his girlfriend. Alexa shows up and says that she's liked Carlos since Big Time Rush's debut, and he chooses her. She asks them to help her stop Sharkus. They take the goop from the goop room and head to the control room and douse him and the hypnolaser in goop, ruining his plans. That was an odd sentence. The boys win the award for best song, and they perform. As they sing, clips from the whole show play. After the awards are over, they head back to the Palm Woods to have a party and even bring Austin Mahone for Katie. <laughs> It's just Gustavo. Just Gustavo? Have you forgotten? I'm amazing. That is right, and you own this show. The episode ends with them dancing to the theme song. The end. That is the entirety of Big Time Rush. Now, before I give my final thoughts, let's do the character ranking. Hello, and welcome to the final installment of Morgan's Character Ranking Corner. It hasn't changed since I moved James up. I'm sorry, Carlos, but you really never did give me anything. You had your standout moment in season two when... That was it. It's not your fault. I don't know why they didn't give you better storylines. Gustavo is still the best character. I love him. He's hilarious. And I really, really like his relationship with the boys. It's so sweet. And I wish that they showed them reciprocating that towards him more. Kelly is still the MVP and Logan is still my favorite member of the band. Not gonna lie, ever since Kendall got back with Joe, he's had some annoying moments. Enough that I thought about moving him down on the list. I didn't, but I thought about it. They did get better about the pointless Katie plot lines as the show went on and they incorporated her more but there were still a lot of stories she had that went nowhere. I've actually quite liked James the last two seasons, and not just because I have a crush on him now that he changed his hair. I just thought he had a lot of funny moments and actually became a better person. Honestly, I say that he's actually tied with Katie, but that would ruin my nice list that I have here, labeled one through eight. So just know that like really these two are kind of on the same level, but I'm not gonna like fix that because it, it, it wouldn't look right, okay? It would ruin my list. And lastly, mom, look, you're a nice lady, but God, are you a boring character. All right, so that is going to do it for me here at the Character Ranking Corner. I hope that you enjoyed this little segment. Now, back to me. Thanks, me. Before I give my final thoughts on the show, I feel like I should talk about Big Time Rush as a band and their music. I'm a fan. <laughs> there weren't a ton of songs in season one that I liked, but I feel like as the seasons went on, the music just kept getting better. Boyfriend is still my favorite, but they have a lot of bangers. I've also watched some of their recent live performances and interviews, and they all seem like really cool, sweet guys. I know I threw a lot of insults at James in this video, but that is all directed at James the character, not James the real life person. But yeah, if they keep touring and they come anywhere near me, I would totally be down to see them. Now season four. I liked it, but I would say that I liked season three more still. I did like how they kept up with the stuff in these episodes that showed their life as a famous boy band, and I think a lot of the characters really matured by the end. Except Kendall. I, I think he went backwards. <laughs> I've gotta say though, the last episode was really weird. <laughs> it ended on a nice note with the performance and the party at the Palmwoods, but the whole evil mac and cheese CEO plotline, it was certainly a choice. I feel like they deserved a better final episode than that. But now we are at the end. We have gone through every episode of Big Time Rush and... 
I don't know what to say. The first half of the series was a bit tough because I was expecting a show about a famous boy band, and instead I got four dudes messing around the palm woods. But it picked up and eventually it gave me what I wanted. There were some actually really funny lines, sweet relationships between characters, and Gustavo. Gustavo is an icon. Overall, I'd say that I had a fun time with Big Time Rush, and I could see why it was one of the biggest shows on Nickelodeon at the time. And yeah, I think that's going to do it for me today, guys. This is definitely the longest video I've ever done, and I hope that you enjoyed it. If you'd like me to do a video like this on another show, definitely let me know in the comments and leave suggestions. Just don't expect it for a few weeks. <laughs> this video took a very long time to make. But of course, I will have plenty of other videos for you on the channel in the meantime. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel to see more content from me. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and go. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Oh, shoot. My tape. My tape! That's all jacked up.